Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the High Roller Super Millions that is of course being played over at GG Poker. It is week 23 already. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I'm Kevin Van der Kooi, also known as Rotterdam in the world of StarCraft 2. And you may have seen me at some of the tables over at GG Poker. And as always, I am joined by the one and only Nano Noko. And Nano Noko, you have been cheating on me with another Kevin. I've seen you. What is this all about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another Kevin. Um, that's right. It was Kevin Martin. Uh, who you always uh, speak highly of as a streamer, right, over on GG. Mm -hmm. uh, we were uh, doing a stream for the Battle of Malta, which was a epic final table, too. Just like one of those fun ones where you're not sure what to expect, but a bunch of craziness happened. You know, two guys playing heads up, everyone else just folded. Um, it was a lot of fun with Kevin, of course. Um, that uh, Me and Kevin are going to do two more streams, I, I believe, uh, up for the Battle of Malta, so you guys can check that out. Um, that'll be happening as well but you know i gotta come back to my original man rotterdam he's here with me uh t episode 23 wow so many weeks already we've done together absolutely and this is one of the sickest ones we've had up to date guys because it's high roller week over at gg poker which means we had an insane field this week we had 581 entries that is the second highest amount of entries we've ever had other than the world series of poker high roller super millions we've had a couple months ago it's going to be a lot of fun i can't wait to talk about the players can't wait to talk about a couple of the hands they've had as well because if you guys are somewhat new to this show we always go live 30 minutes in advance of the final table actually starting and we just go over the nine players we have a little preview we go over some of their previous results in these high roller super millions but of course the majority of this tournament has been played already on sunday evening that's when we had the 581 and only nine are left at this point and of course as always it was a 10k buy-in event and this week there is three quarters of a million at top i mean nano this is going to be pretty sick because winning one of these is always a big deal but winning seven hundred and twenty six thousand dollars on a casual tuesday evening yeah that makes it a little extra special yeah i definitely agree with you i mean it's gonna be a lot up top and we got what six uh repeat final tableists in this uh tournament still remaining i mean just action's been crazy you know i've been doing the extra stream with kevin martin but also of course uh, the Daniel Negreanu challenge with Doug Polk, mm -hmm. oh my god, that has been sick because somehow Dan Negreanu actually got back in the green, right, right before the last session. He's down a little bit again now, but uh, it looks like he's been doing his homework, which is what he I, he should have been doing uh, before this challenge started. It seems like he is working hard, he is putting up a fight, and uh, people are a little bit nervous because I know there's a lot of money on Doug Polk right <laughs> now, but you know... It, it's very possible that Daniel can actually uh, maybe pull out a green. Is he still yeah. a dog? Probably, but it's a lot to work to do. Yeah, I asked you last week, like, what are your initial thoughts after going over the first couple of sessions? Do you feel like he's been a bit unlucky or has he been just mostly outplayed? And you said, well, maybe a little bit of both, but definitely been outplayed in some spots. I got to say, over the last two sessions, Daniel looked really good, man. And if it wasn't for a couple of unfortunate runouts, I mean, in the last one, I'm sure you saw the hand, the queen five against the aces, like Doc got there on the river. Like, those are massive pots. If those start going Daniel's way as well, the numbers could have looked very different up to this point. Oh, I definitely agree. And I, I believe someone, Bill Perkins, who's got a lot of money on this side, but on Dan Underground, who was asking, uh, you know, does anyone know about the all-in EV? And it seems like Daniel is running bad whenever they get it all in. Um, there was hands before where it was like he got in the jacks versus tens on on a flop and then he come run around or flush. Like, yeah. uh, these these are huge pots, man. They added $80,000 minimum a pot. That's a lot, right? Like, this, these are bigger than some of the pay jumps in this tournament today. But regardless, uh, that's fun. You can catch all that uh, on GG, I believe. Is that right, YouTube? Yep. Yep, absolutely. We're mostly streaming it on YouTube. At first, the couple, first couple of episodes were actually on the GG Twitch channel as well, but now it's just kind of all on YouTube. There are giveaways as well. I believe all you need to do is just comment with your username on one of the videos at the YouTube channel, and then you're in the running to win a couple of free tickets. I've been watching pretty much every single minute. I don't think I've missed a minute of the challenge yet. You're and such I'm a actually... fan. You're such a hardcore yeah. fan, buddy. <laughs> No, it's been really fun. And like I said, I've been genuinely impressed by the way that Danny has been playing. Like at first, I was like, oh my goodness, like every turn, every river, it's the same thing. You know, Danny is shot, or uh, Dog is just super aggressive. Danny can't keep up. Anyway, that's a lot of fun. It's been super cool to follow, and that will keep going for a long time because they're only like six or seven percent into the challenge. 
But that, you know, more about that perhaps later. Let's take a look at the nine players that we have making it to the final table of the second biggest high roll of Super Millions we've had so far. And this is our chip leader, David Yen. He is formerly known as Helen Clark, so he has been to a final, tables be uh, final table before of this tournament. Apparently, this is the seventh time he's played the high roll of Super Millions, and he's made two final tables out of seven tries. It's pretty good, Nano. Yeah, uh, David Yan, known as Miss Oracle, he's uh, he's from New Zealand. Uh, he's 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 very very good. He used to be uh, primarily a cash game player. I, I was playing when I was playing. Uh, he was playing a lot too in the same stakes. Uh, he was very solid, very uh, good. Uh, you know, it was just like hard to find leaks with the guy. He's just you know, and if he, I remember him playing as Helen Clark uh, on, in that tournament, he got fifth. I remember like no crazy mistakes. Um, you know, he took his he took some spots here and there, right? It was a bit confused. You know, not uh, it looks very strong. Maybe it didn't work, and he made some good cold four bet bluff. It's just like he's a very strong player. I, I know of this guy, and uh, you know, it looks like he won through a one k satellite. Like he's here in the ship lead, so it's gonna be uh, a lot. But I was reading the actually the poker news updates uh, on this uh, tournament not too long ago, and um, he actually won some. The reason he's the chip leader is some really sick hand. He got in King Jack. He, shat, he jammed King Jack offsuit like with a big stack. He beat yeah. Jacks in tens, I believe, and he, he <laughs> great. So uh, I was like, oh wow, he's a nice chip leader. But uh, actually, near the end of the tournament, he he won like a multi-way pot that was worth like eight million or something, and that's why he's the chip leader right now. I mean, we all need to get a little lucky in these MTTs every now and then, Nanako. Nobody ever really gets there all the time with all the sick plays, right? Well, that is not the hand that our production team has uh, prepared for us, but we do have a very fun hand that David Yen played in this tournament. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that absolutely helped David Yen to make it as deep as he did coming into the final table as a chip leader. Nanonoko, I looked at this hand and I'm like, I, I, I made, why are we limping with Ace King? Like, you're kind of asking for it, right? But what do you take away from this? Well, yeah, I'll tell you that. You know, how, like when you limp those big, the big pairs or big Ace King, these hands, right? You're like, oh, I'm looking for it. And you're like, what a dream flop. But you let hands in that wouldn't play. You put even put a minimum raise. That deuce three offsuit is not going to be playing. He ends up flopping trips. He turns the full house. It just go check, check. And then he there's a pot size bet, I believe, on the turn, and then another bet on the river. Uh, you can see David Yang going for the smaller bet on the river, probably because he thinks the uh, you know it's a little bit scary for his opponent uh, when it comes to four straight out there in a limp pot. It's much more likely he can hit the straight, so he sizes a bit down because if David Yang had just jammed it all in, maybe his opponent finds some hero fold because of that uh, four straight mm -hmm. out there. Uh, so you know he was playing the situation that it was a limp pot, uh, but you know it was. This guy's running good, right? He's got two, three off seats, winning big pots. <laughs> he's got King Jack. He's beating Jacks and tens. Like, uh, he's in good shape today, I think. Yeah, it's even an overbet on the turn because it was 520 in the middle and he's betting 630. But yeah, yeah you're it's right. It's so you're rough, right. right? If you have Ace King, you don't want to fold Ace King there. But why are we not raising Ace King, Mr. Mai Yungji? Well, he didn't make it to the final table, Nanonoko. So I guess you I would know say why that now, was... right? Because he limped <laughs> Ace King. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at our second player that has made it to the final table of the 23rd edition. And he's back. We've seen him before. We know that this guy's an absolute sicko. Davidi Kitai, and he's actually one of the Triple Crown winners as well. I was reading up on that, you know, together with Elki, sharing that. There's only five of those, I believe. Uh, I mean, we already went over him a couple of times. He has played only in five high rollers Super Millions so far, but he's made it to the final table twice, and this time he comes in with one hell of a stack. Yeah, for someone who, you know, I, I would think that Davidi Kitai was playing every single one, but he only played it five times, and two final tables pretty sick, man. This guy is very 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 tough to play against he's very very strong live player uh, you know you don't really expect like these kind of like younger uh, internet players that could be very strong he's he's got the sickest reads man this guy will call you down with king highs multiple barrels in <laughs> deep in the tournament this guy will make the sickest bluffs uh he's and you know how like there's certain guys that are just really fun to watch the vd katai way way up there is really fun to watch uh very unique plays excellent results like man you just search his name on youtube you'll you'll find him with the craziest hands every single time i'm happy to see him come in in second place 
uh, because last time he came to the final table, he was one of the shorter stacks, and you don't really mm -hmm. get to see much of someone when they only got 15 big blinds to come in, right? And it looked like he didn't do too much with it because he did get eighth place, but today he's near the top, and uh, I, li I like what I see with him. Definitely, I think one of the favorites coming into tonight. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Davidi Kitai had, and I think this is perhaps the most spectacular one of the nine hands that we are going to preview today. No, 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 Cole. I mean, when you go up against guys that are incredibly good at poker, it gets difficult. But when they start running like this, it becomes even more gnarly. I mean, talk us through the hand, but I think it's safe to say that the, the TV guy got a little bit lucky here. I got a little bit lucky for sure. In this hand, he did three bet the 6 5 suited from the small blind. It's just these pros, man, they just give no respect to their opponents. They just three bet even some garbage. Uh, so he does three bet the 6 5 suited out of position, and he flops. Pretty much nothing. Just needs an inside straight draw. Puts a little bet out there. A lot of people like to continue with a little bet just in case their opponent just folds the flop. And he gets called. But then when you turn to flush draw, that's when you go big. You try to target those medium strength hands, you know, those uh, 10 nines, the king jacks, the ace nines. They probably will fold to bet. But when he gets called again, he's probably thinking, man, this guy probably has a queen. Uh, he does make that straight on the river card. Uh, and he goes for a half pop bet. I think he, the reason he doesn't just put his opponent all in, he, just like uh, he, a lot of guys don't like to call off for the tournament life, right? So like you know he leaves them a little bit of chips, and uh, you know he, <laughs> he got a lot of he got a lot of value here with that that river trade. And the guy looked him up at the queen ten because to be fair, the queen ten is one of the weaker queens uh, his opponent can have, and pretty much got a, a perfect bet size for that hand strength. So sick because if you look at these two hands on the flop, you're like, yeah. How is six five of diamonds ever gonna get there and win this hand somehow, some way? Again, stop pair, gut shot, flush draw. I mean, mashallah, had it all. And in the end, he came short. I do have one question about his hand for you. If the turn is not the four of diamonds, let's say it's the four of spades or the four of clubs, do you think that Davide Katai makes the same bet on the turn or do you think he slows down and maybe even gives up? In my opinion, most likely you'll give up. You don't want to have a 100% continue range on the turn with such a weak draw. I expect him to bet again if he had like a king 10, a king jack that wasn't, you know, like at least you got an extra overcard, a better straight draw, like things like this. Uh, this hand probably would check fault the turn, but he did again. Davidi Katai is a sick man. And we know we've seen some of these guys right at our final tables. They're like, man, they don't have much equity. They just bet the turn with nothing. And they just jam that river with nothing. So most likely check fault the turn, but anything can happen with these guys. All right, well, guys, buckle up and enjoy the ride because Davide Katai comes in with a big stack and it should be a lot of fun to watch him play poker tonight. Let's take a look at our next player that has made it to the 23rd final table. And this man is now the proud owner of a brand new record as Nicholas Ostet, obviously known as uh, Lina 900 as well in the world of online poker, has now made it to five final tables. Five final tables out of 23 uh, times that we've ran this tournament. Nobody has made more final tables than this man. No, 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 you've been giving him a bit of a hard time where you're like, ah, if you don't win it the first three times, you're not winning it the fourth time either. I'm feeling pretty good about Lina, man, because, I mean, the records or the results he's been posting in this tournament over the last two months is just spectacular. Lena 900 simply is one of the best internet poker players of all time. Uh, there's no question about it. Him and like guys like him, they get compared to like the European Darwin. These guys are just very, very strong. Um, but you're right. He's made five final tables. It's a great record. Has he won it yet? Nope. He had a <laughs> chance on October 25th. I remember he was very, very close to shipping in. I forget mm -hmm. who it was that overtook him, but uh, he did end up losing it. I do think, though, this guy's like guaranteed top three in this tournament for sure. I don't know. It's just the way he plays so smooth, so solid. Uh, there's a reason he makes final tables consistently. I, I'm actually a big fan of Lena 900, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure if he's going to ship it today. Maybe fifth time's a charm because we haven't had that yet, right? But, you know, it's definitely not fourth or third if they didn't win it. But usually I'm like, I'm a little bit wary of these guys, but he's obviously very strong. But maybe, hey, I'll tell you this. If he hasn't been, he hasn't shipped one yet, he wants to ship this one, right? Because it's 700K up top. Yeah, no, this is definitely uh, the best one or the second best one so far to win. I'm really happy to see Nicholas back and he comes in with a lot of big blinds as well. So it should be a lot of fun. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Nicholas had on his journey to his fifth final table. 
And this is just kind of a brutal one, man. I feel like nobody deserves this. Not even my worst enemy deserves a run out like this. But what do you make of it, Nana? Your worst enemy deserves it. We're not like okay. this. I'll tell you that. No, he, bet, <laughs> he bets a two pair, right? And of course, you want to bet two pair gets called. He's like, yep, loving it. And he, so when you turn to full house, you put a small bet out there. You're like, I'm feeling good when I get called again. Bets again on River and just got check raise all in. Of course, he's like, I've got, I've still got a really strong full house. He makes the call and mm -hmm. sees the terrible news. But he's still at the final table, still coming in third place. So, man, if he won this hand, he'd have even more chips, maybe possibly a chip lead at some point. But um, it looks like there's some uh, some giveaway you want to tell him about, Roddy? I don't know if we already have a giveaway yeah, or not. Yeah, I have been something. I've been to tell him you yeah. tell him about it. Tell him. Look in the chat. All right. Apparently, there is a free roll currently happening. It starts in nine minutes, and I believe the password for the free roll is 5M. So, 5 million, I guess. But just 5M is the password for the free roll that starts in nine minutes. I've been so focused on a little free show, and I don't know. My mind wasn't even there yet. I was like, are we already doing free rolls? Apparently, uh, we are. You guys can win five satellite tickets for the $22 Battle of Malta. So, password 5M enjoy good luck but don't close the stream because we're gonna have a sick final table tonight let's take a look at our next player the man who comes in fourth in chips tonight uh someone that we're not very familiar with we haven't seen him at a final table before the brawl man 33 has apparently played in 11 of these so he's absolutely no stranger uh, but this is only the second time he has cashed so far yeah, we got to throw in those uh, people we don't know, man. They're the ones that are, are very fun to watch sometimes. Sometimes they're, you know, a little dry, but um, I'm looking at his results. And then I look at his GG Poker wins. This guy's cash for 1.26 million mm -hmm. on GG Poker. But biggest score we can post is a $75,000 win. Man, this guy must play a lot on GG Poker or something to accumulate those winnings. Uh, and, he, you know, he's played some Super Millions. No results yet, but he's made one of the final tables a big one. Looks like he did satellite in. Uh, yeah, don't know much much about him, but he, he he probably does play a lot here to get 1.26 million on GG. Winning the 3.1k Bounty King is pretty cool, though, because it's actually a pretty stacked event. Like, pretty much all the grinders, like the high roll, not necessarily like super high rollers, but the guy who will play all the big tournaments, they love that Bounty King event. And it's really cool because there are three Bounty Kings starting at the same time most of the time. I think it's 7.30 Central European uh, time. And it's like they have a $31 Bounty event, a 351, and then they've got the Bounty uh... King of 3,150 as well. They run multiple times throughout the week, and that's actually a pretty prestigious tournament in my eyes at least so i'm expecting some solid plays coming out of this man i'm always a bit of a fan of the eastern uh, european players as well let's take a look at one of the hands that brahman 33 had on his journey to his final table i don't think that this one really tells us a whole lot other than the fact that he's uh, not willing to i guess fall jacks on the turn but what do you make of it nana he's a trapper man this guy lifts a small blind with two jacks and then you know he checks the flop going for it he didn't he didn't get the bait the check raise and then when the turn now he he finally got his opponent to bend then goes for the check raise uh you're gonna have to be cautious man when you see two guys some guy uh limping jacks into you uh, you know with this stack size it's, i'm not you know sometimes you see a guy limping you in small blind for sure saying like man they don't have anything but this guy you're gonna have to be a little bit worried today all right we've got 12 minutes until the cards go up in the virtual air and we've got five more players to cover so i guess we can speed it up a little bit let's take a look at our next player another familiar face this man too has made it to final tables before has not been exactly crushing <laughs> these final tables as michael watson has a nine plays and nine plays and an eight plays so far the high roll is super millions but hey his fourth final table already that's still damn impressive it's not bad, right? There's some guys who have zero final tables who've been entering these results. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he he's known as Sir Watts, the mad dog, I think, before we had in his player bio. A ninth and ninth. He did improve on his ninth place finish <laughs> twice. He did get an eighth place that one time. But every time he's came to our final table, I believe he came in in ninth or eighth place, the very, very bottom. But today he's coming in fifth. It's it's a lot better, but he's only got 21 big blinds, so he know he might get a he might get an eighth place and get a ninth place and seventh. But no. maybe this is the big one where he's like, I'm gonna finally do it. He has a ton of tournament winnings. Um, yeah. You know, I remember when he started playing, he was friends with Timex. Uh, you know, obviously we know about him, who's one of the most known uh, poker players out there. He's good. This guy just hasn't done it yet, but good thing is he has made multiple final tables. He's paid off his you know his entries so far. 
can today be the day? Well, we're about to find out. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Michael Watson had on his journey to his fourth final table. Ace nine battling it out with queen seven. And I'll talk us through real quick. You see here, he flats a small one, ace nine offsuit. Not the standard play, but he knows his opponent's up to no good, but he doesn't want to kind of raise two, re raise and kind of get it in. So he plays a little bit more post flop. Check calls a flop, check calls a turn. In this hand, what's important is that Alex Ponikov did multi barrel this turn with queen seven. He does it's just no pair, no draw on the turn. Uh, so very nice play from Michael Watson. The river would have been a, an interesting spot, but it's also hard for his opponent to fire another bet. Yeah. <laughs> would have been fun actually to see what would have happened is if opponent did go all out on the river. Because then all of a sudden you start sweating a little bit with your ace now. You're like, what do I beat? <laughs> it's like, well, a stone cold bluff, a guy who had nothing and turned nothing and rivet nothing. But other than that, ace nine all of a sudden starts feeling a little weak. Uh, fun one. It's good to see Michael Watson sticking around here and it's really cool to have him back. Let's take a look at our next player who I believe satellited his way into this event as well. Um, he actually did win one of the Battle of Malta events, but Joker Face. He's got a beautiful ribbon around his avatar. I mean, I'm kind of jealous of that. I've been hunting one Nanonoko, no success so far. But this is the very <laughs> first time that Joker Face has played the High Roller Super Millions, and he immediately makes it to the final table. That's got to feel pretty damn good. It's going to feel very good. We've had these, some of these guys, you know, first time playing, make final tables, make some sick cash. You know, we're going to have guys that play the Super Moons for the first time because of the special series. It's highly roller week, right? Before, you know, mm -hmm. the World Series of Poker, and some of those guys won like a million dollars. Uh, so Joker Face here did win a, a ring, as you can see. A um, million dollars in GG Poker wings, but, you know, I think this might be... I wouldn't say he's a wild card because you can cl clearly see that he's played a lot, he's done well, um, but just someone we don't know much about. Uh, doesn't play the Super Millions normally, but has done well and he's probably pretty good. We just don't know much about him. Actually won one of the Bounty Hunter series as well and also the Bounty King one. I actually think I... Uh, yeah. You got stacked by this guy too? I'm no, no, I mean maybe at a different tournament then. No, no, there aren't many people on this client that didn't stack me yet. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's take a look at one of the hands that Joker Face had on his journey to his very first final table in his first try in the High Roller Super Millions. A7 battling it out with 7 8. Um, what do you take? What do you what do you make of this hand then? Well, you can see this guy's not scared, right? He gets three bet out of position. Um, cut off versus button with the A7 suit. It still makes the call. So he's you know, he knows there's some disrespect from all these guys, and he was right. His opponent was uh three betting him eight seven suited. Flops uh, flops an ace, but you know, flopping an ace is always nice, but flopping an ace in a three bet pot is a defender. It, without any kicker is always a little bit scary so you know you check calling the flop is standard but when your opponent bets again on turn you're like oh my god does this guy have it there's no flush draw out there so it even looks more likely his opponent has like a ace king ace queen ace jack and against those hands he's pretty much drawing dead almost uh but you know he just makes a good call on the turn and decent chance he would have called river bet uh you know it's just in this game you're gonna get in tough spots but it's all about fighting those tough spots. You know, if you just always avoid tough spots, you're probably giving away chips here and there, slowly bleeding without realizing it. So you got to fight for it. And he fought for it, and he's at this final table today. Yep. I was wrong, by the way. This guy did not sell a light in. He just kind of bought in. He's like, you know what? I've been crushing <laughs> it like... in the Battle of Malta. As I've been doing well in the Bounty Hunter series. Let's take a look at that event. They always broadcast on the Tuesday evening and see if I can make a final table. And he did. Next up is another player from Russia. I play too slow. Also someone who seems to be very active over on the client as he's got 1.2 millions in winnings. But this is the first time we see him at a final table of the High Roller Super Millions. But he has played in 10 of these so far. So he has absolutely tried. Yeah, and uh, I like his screen name. I play too slow. I just I hope he lives up to his name and actually plays really slow. But I know no one likes to see it, but you know, you can't make that screen name and play super fast now, can you? <laughs> but uh, he's got 1.2 million in earnings. Um, you know, our unknowns today, they mm -hmm. seem to be big players. You know, they, they play yeah. a lot of tournaments. They've done pretty well. You know, we don't have those guys with 30K in earnings today, do we? <laughs> 
No, nobody is winning more tonight than they have won in their entire life so far at GG Poker. Like, that's probably not going to happen. Let's take a look at one of the hands that I played too slow had, which is kind of a bizarre one. We don't see this very often, I feel, this deep into the tournament. Look at the pre-flop action in this hand, Nananoko. Like, family yeah. pot? <laughs> like, I didn't know that this, these things happen. <laughs> yeah, there's one guy that did not get involved in this pot. It was that... It was that that guy down there. I can't read that name, but he was the one who limped. It's king. the guy who folded. Yeah, it's the ace king limper. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, on this on this flop, there was a bet from Mike Watson, and I played too slow. Did call up the two eights. Um, normally, you would say, okay, it's easy to call one off. You know, it's just one over card. But it's actually six ways to the flop. So two eights mm -hmm. making this call on a flop is still a little bit heroic. Um, just go check check throughout the rest of the hand. But yeah, it's kind of cool to see a six-way flop uh, <laughs> not too often you'll see that no i'm with you as well perhaps it is because he was the last one to uh to act on the flop because i think like if somebody opens in a five six-way pot and then you have eight it's like there aren't really going to be any good turn or river cards right unless you somehow spike the eight which just doesn't happen very often but since everybody else folded, he was like you know what I'm, i'll make one call on the flop and see what happens and then they checked it all the way down. So excellent uh, decision in the end, but I play too slow and we wish him all the best. Means we've got two more players to cover. Next up, I'm very excited, Nenonoko. On the other hand, he comes in as one of the shortest stacks tonight as he only comes in with 10 big blinds, but back to back final tables for this man, Elis Parsonen, our pot limit Omaha master. And he was so damn close to winning last week. Uh, I'm still a bit sad about it, Neno, because I just want to get rid of this one that I have in front of my name, you know, when it comes to making winners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I didn't realize who Elis Parsonen was. He's He is a PLO master. Um, he's known as EEE -E -E in some numbers. And if you watch Lex stream, he's always at the final tables too, man. This guy's actually really, really good. I didn't realize how good at tournaments he was though, because every time I'm looking in lobbies, right, this guy's like always at the end. Um, and, you know, he's at the end again today, back-to-back -back final tables. Um, and he plays big PLO cash games. It's not like he's playing the 25-50 game. He is playing that, right? 5,000. This guy's playing like 100, 200 and stuff like this. He's, he, he's a big roller. He's a big crusher. Um, so, you know, like the other day you picked him. I was like, okay, I don't know. You just pick some guy you don't know. But this guy's actually really good. That was actually a really good pick. And he did get uh, top two. So, um, you know. We're going to see a lot of him in the final tables to come. I, I just know it because this guy is just a crusher. I just hope that he, uh, if he does double up and he gets a little stack going for himself, we love the emotes and we embrace memes over here, but maybe don't use your entire time bank on spamming emotes <laughs> this time because I think that really backfired last week. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Elis had on his journey to back-to-back -to -back final tables. Not the most action-packed hand we've had, but it does stick around on the flop, Nano. Anything special for you here? No, not the too special. Like, Elis, though, is a very solid player. He's not crazy. If you remember the final table, he was playing there. He got second. He wasn't playing too crazy there, but he wasn't giving up some spots. He was occasionally making some moves, but, you know, this is a style thing. But maybe this is what gets him to the final table every single time, like I mentioned. Uh, you know, he's not, like, trying to, like, bet, bet, jam some ace 10 here. And, you know, making some sick call downs, but he's very, very good, very solid. Um, I expect him to do well if he does get a double up. Otherwise, maybe he goes for a little bit of ladders. Who knows today? But he is coming in quite short. Yeah, indeed. Only 10 big blinds. But I, I hope at least that he gets a little momentum going. That'd be a lot of fun. would love to see him make another magical run. That means we have one more player to cover before we actually start talking about poker and we get to see some action, whole cards up, the way that everybody loves it. Uh, this is a difficult name. We've seen him at the final table before. We'll go with Alexei. Alexei, I think that's pretty good. He apparently fired four bullets into this event. I love that our production team was like, we have to get that one in. This man really wanted to make a final table of the second biggest high roller super millions we've had so far. And uh, he got the job done, Nanonoko, but four bullets, that is quite the investment. Yeah, he's, he's very good though, um, but he, you know, he was multi burn at Queen 7 earlier with no, no pair, no draw on the turn against Michael Watson, right? Uh, but uh, if I recall correctly, the previous final table, July 14th, which was some time ago, it's been a couple months now, right? Uh, he mm -hmm. was trying to sell some action, 
Uh, he did sell some action. Looks like I don't. Maybe he didn't. Oh, he didn't fire. At, he probably sold action on the fullest bullet, but the multiple yeah, yeah. <laughs> fire action, right? So he put in four bullets in. Um, he's a very good player, but he's coming in with ten big blinds. So you know, like he's got he's got a lot of work to do with this lineup. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Alexei had on his unit to his second final table. I think this one kind of speaks for itself. It's fun to see he went up against Idris, by the way, who we have commentated quite a few times. He's made a couple final tables as well. It's good to see him still trying. That's the guy with the Warcraft 3 pass that we went over a while ago. But yeah, King Jack against Nines, flop strips. Life's pretty good then. And he just puts his opponent all in on the turn. Tried to represent that flesh draw and it just got baited. And he saws the jack, and he's like drawing practically dead almost with just two outs to go. Alexei does win this pine. It's time. Final table, Roddy. Are you ready? I'm so ready, man. I've actually been really looking forward to it. I watched the entire stream that you did together with Kevin Martin as well, and I was like, man, I wish it was Tuesday. I want my Nano Noko back. <laughs> you know, Nano, I did notice your style of commentary with Kevin Martin was very different than with me in general. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, with you, I'm like, I got this noob over here, you know? I got to help him out. I got to <laughs> kneel to this guy all day. You know? Kevin Martin, man, he's got a lot of knowledge about poker, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't, I was like, oh, wow, this guy knows a lot. He knows more about, I, I got to ask him some questions on what to do. Uh, but, you yeah. know, it's different, but it's fun. We can watch. The good thing is you're at home doing nothing, probably. Watch all the shows. Watch the Dan and the Grindy Challenge. Watch us stream. And today, 700K up top. Let's do it. All right, then I guess it's time for our little competition. Nananoko, who is going to ship the second biggest edition of the High Roller Super Millions we've had so far? Well, I told you earlier, Lena 900, he ain't shipping it, right? He hasn't shipped it in five times yet. So my pick today is Davidi Kitai. I love the way he plays. I know he's in an online tournament. He plays much better live um, because he's, he actually has really sick reads. I don't know. You can. I don't think you can do that on the line unless they're doing snap cams mid hands or something. But <laughs> I know he's very good. He plays the coolest hands. You're gonna love to watch him play. Everyone's gonna love to watch him today. He's got a good stack today. That's my pick today, Davidi Kitai. I'm actually very interested in the seat selection. All right, Davidi Kitai staying away from Nicholas and David Yen, the two big stacks. Let's see what David Yen decides to do here. I feel like he might not. Okay, he's all right. He's going to go on the left of Nicholas. So this is kind of funny because I was probably going to go for Nicholas Estet. And I think I'll stick with it. But I actually have a feeling about Brahman 33. For no reason. It's just that his stats <laughs> seem quite all right. I think he's a bit of a grinder. And I just feel like this is such a unique, <laughs> sick opportunity for him to ship it. But I'm going to go with the absolute crusher. The man who has set the record. Five final tables. I think Lina 900, Nicholas Estet is going to get the job done today. Well, he is a very good pick, man. I tell you. I do think he is guaranteed top three, man. That guy is so good. But there's the curse. You can't make five final tables and not ship it yet. He's practically never going to ship one. Okay. But he's going to keep have... making these final tables. We'll see. No, no. I'm actually a bit worried here about the first hand. Because imagine if everybody folds and then it falls to Nicholas. And then Nicholas <laughs> just shoves ace deuce. And he gets snapped called by the guy who plays too slow with the ace king. Uh oh. I mean, look, Elis is already uh, doing his emoji things. So, like, he's not even involved in the hands. Remember, you're saying maybe save some time, but, uh, you know, that's cool. And I, I think your guy is in trouble. I don't know. What does David Yen get? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Wow, so you picked the guy with uh, a <laughs> stack already. That is a sick. That is an absolutely sick setup. Let's see if Nicholas can run hot here and spike a deuce. Nope. We do have running clubs a lot. Oh, oh! <laughs> the deuce from heaven. Needs to avoid a king. I mean, yep, that is safe. I mean, that is brutal, heartbreaking for I play too slow. But what a way for Nicholas Estet to start this final table. Unbelievable. And everyone else got to be feeling this. They just literally didn't have to sweat any page. You know, they got a page jump instantly. Wow, must be awesome. Alex Ponikovs is loving it. He was in ninth place. Um, Nicholas. Okay, so Joker face is sitting out. So Nicholas Estet, I think he might just ship it in nine four ops. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. He is oh. going to ship it. Wow, your guy, you blessed your guy so hard. Maybe today's your day. Maybe it, there is a chance. The fifth time is the charm to win. Well, fourteen million chips is good. That's great too because he's got position on all of the big stacks. Look at it, everyone. Be he's got position on all of the big stacks. David Yen's probably like, oh uh -oh. my god, fireworks maybe here. Yeah. 
Ooh, wow. I don't know if he lists false King Jack does here. No, he does not. He makes the call. Nananoko, King Jack against A6 suited. Flip. Oh, wow. Two guys down? Back Was that first two hands? Yes. It was, right? Yes. No, well, we had one fault hand. Technically, this is the third hand. Because Nicholas Osset shipped the 9-4 off. Oh, right, you're right. Well, Alexei did make a pay jump, right? He came in as the shortest stack and he finished in eighth place, but obviously only three hands in. That can possibly feel very good. We can go back to the first hand real quick as I think Nicholas is just going to take this one down unless Davide Kitai wants to defend a king six. He if might. He does, we'll he talk might. about he's, it. He's, he's Davide Kitai. I want to say this, though. This dude, Joker Face, did not mm -hmm. show up to the tournament so far. <laughs> and he's gotten two pay jumps in three hands. This guy, like, he's going to wake up, right? And he's going to be like, oh, my God, I missed the tournament. I can't believe I got ninth place. Like, wow, I got an extra, like, 80K. Wow, this yeah. must be nice. I mean, we're not done yet. This guy might just make it into top five by not actually being here. <laughs> no, uh, let's go back to the first hand of the tournament. I mean, we don't often start. That is heartbreaking for I play too slow. He plays a five, six, seven hour tournament on the Sunday evening, qualifies for the final table, waits until Tuesday, probably his entire day was to get ready for this final table, make sure he felt well, that he ate enough, but not too much. First hand, small blind shoves into you, ace deuce, you call it off at ace king and you're out. No, no, that's, that's absolutely brutal. Yeah, um, that guy's breaking monitors for sure, mouse and stuff like that. <laughs> it, it's... Wow, this, like, usually, okay, we've seen guys lose on the very first hand of Fallen Table, not like two guys in three hands. Um, really, real sick. I, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about uh, Joker Face, but wow, bro, man, man, you had some good reads on this guy because you're saying, I have a good feeling about him. He's punishing Davide Katai from the big blind with Queen 3 offsuit. Wow. This is some, sure, this is no a good, fear. this is, this is a good final table already. I already feel it. Yeah. I'm actually really feeling this lineup tonight as well. Let's see what Davidi Katai does here, if he's a believer or not. Does he want to commit 1.1 million more to see a flop and then play ace-5 out of position? Oh, or man. is he just going to go all out? Does he pull the trigger? Does he just ship it in? That'd be one hell of a play. <laughs> I tell you, if Davidi Katai was playing live poker, man, this guy would figure it out. But online, wow. it's a little bit different. Does lose that hand. Wow, we, this is a treat today. And I'll tell you that Michael Watson... Out laddered two guys already today. There's a lot of new first happening today, right? Because he got ninth, oh, ninth, yeah. and eighth. Guaranteed top seven. Well done, yeah. Mike Watson. He's like, so this is the way I gotta do it. Like, let's just stay out of trouble. Let the other guys bust for us. And this is how I ladder up at the final table. It's kind of funny as well because when you commentated the final table of the Battle of Malta event, I think you guys didn't have anybody busting for like oh, an yeah. hour straight, right? There was like no bust exactly. at all. Yeah, they were they were just surviving and stuff like that. And I'm gonna say, I'm Joker face is back. He's like, wow, two guys are gone. You know, <laughs> like he's 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 back and ready to play. It's like, what happened to the other two guys? I've only been late for like five minutes. <laughs> this is a fun one. David Kitai raised Ace Nine offsuit from the bottom. David Jan, our previous ship leader, just made the call. Ooh. Well, that's a big play bet. Of so here's the thing. Normally your opponent would check call here of the Queen Nine for you know third pop bet, what a lot of people bet, but the big bet is gonna change things up. It does still make the call. The Vidikatai does have the best hand, but if he does it's gonna be hard for him to win. But the thing is the Vidikatai does make sick hero calls, so we'll see. But David Yan's thinking about leading out. A lot of guys yeah. like to lead out uh when the pair pairs they think you know they can represent that pair a bit more it's a little bit better to lead out when the eight pairs or the three pairs because some guys don't like to see bet those hands a top card pairing very easy but could tie to still have those hands um so we'll see what davian opts to do oh and he does lead out for a little less than a million this becomes a bit awkward for davidi kitai but he may actually feel that ace nine could be good here it is hard though, right? Because if you make it's this hard. call, what is going to happen on the river? What do you do then if it just breaks out? There is a deuce on the river and then he fires 2.5 million. David Kitai seems to acknowledge that it's not worth the headache. And David Jen chips up as well. Well done by David there. Yeah, very nicely played. You know, he wasn't scared of the bigger bet. David Kitai is going to get involved again. Man, my, my guy's already lost 2 million chips. Your guy just luck box <laughs> 5 million chips. Oh, this is, this is not a good one for me today, is it? Well, we've seen crazy things happen at these final tables. Last week, you were already celebrating Elis' victory, and then 
I don't know what happened. We blinked twice and he was out of the tournament because he had no time bank anymore and called it all <laughs> off with the queen seven. So. Oh, that's right, right? Like the bet, bet, jam. And, and you know, he also think Elis, he was, he was spamming emotes. Uh, well, a lot of love for the guy. A very good player, like I told you uh, in today's uh, final table profile. Um, should be a fun. This, this is a good lineup, man. And like, remember I always say those, uh, those unknown players, like, they're always a bit fun to watch, bit uh, you know, they're good. But today seemed especially good. He did, and broad man, I'm, I'm looking at that guy. He, he seems like he's gonna shake things up today. Yeah, no, but like there is a difference between an unknown player that has 12k in uh, tournament earnings so far, <laughs> or guys that clearly play all day, mm -hmm. every day over at GG Poker and play a lot of the biggest side events as well, like the 3ks, the 5ks. Broadman does not come in here as an unknown. It's like, oh, let's hope I flop well. Like no. I'm sure that he's got a plan and he wants to show what he's made of. Nicholas Ostad decides to limp here with the seven deuce suited from the small blind against one of the shortest stacks at the final table. Yep. I mean, when you got a lot of chips, you can get away with these limps. Uh, he turned a flush draw, so he's going to bet, but Joker Face should be able to pick up the, this hand if he can dodge a heart. Uh, makes the call. He does dodge the heart, so I don't really expect to see Joker Face lose this pot. It, it's hard for Nicholas Ostad to bet again, I think, and get his yeah. opponent to fold. No need to get too splashy. You don't want Danny on the ground appearing on your table, dancing that you splashed the pot. I don't know if you've seen those. So. <laughs> I don't <laughs> do think I have. Talking? I don't okay. think I do know. It's a future that uh, Gigi implemented a couple of weeks ago, but the first day it was set like whatever would trigger it, it was set relatively low. So whenever somebody would lose a pot of like, I don't know, 20 big blinds, a Danny or a Grana would pop up and he would start dancing on the table. Then no you way, the really? Yes, yeah, absolutely. But uh, the first day it just happened all the time. So I think they scaled it back a little bit. And now you only see it if somebody like just, you know, punts off like a hundred big blinds and Danny or appears and he starts dancing, which can be a little infuriating if you're on the wrong side of things, but it is kind of funny. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so we got a uh, two shorter. I mean, I don't. I don't really want to call them short stacks. But, you know, no, they no. got a lot of chips. Ace eight, man. This is this is tough because it's clear, <laughs> my last hand. You don't want to <laughs> use that right now because it could be your last hand, Elis. Um, Ace eight here, Chip EV. This would be a call from definitely for Chip EV playing this. ICM. Yep, not Mexico. sure, but he does. That's a good call. That is indeed a good call for now, but Elis runs pretty hard at these final tables. Michael Watson does not. He needs an ace or a nine on the river, or he is left with that basically nothing. It. Oh, wow. Man, poor Michael Watson. He really does run pretty rough at these final tables, doesn't he? <laughs> He's back to where he was, uh, you know, at the bottom. He did outlast those two guys. But uh, he's he's in trouble here. He is ahead here against the Jack 10, but I really feel like he's done this hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's good. Or actually, I think he's going to win this one because you always lose the big ones, but then you win yeah, the Yeah, no, he's one. done. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Oh, he's back. He's back. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> This is classic Nananoko. He's done. <laughs> he's done. Oh, no. There are still cards to come. No, this actually, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but when you have these like 55, 45 scenarios, when it's for your tournament life, basically, you lose the 10 million pot, and then you get it in with two big blinds, and then you win. And you're like, yeah, great. You know, exactly what I was hoping for. I've never, I don't know if you've ever had it happen, but in live poker, right? Like you see some guy get cooler so hard and they win the next hand. This guy next to you goes, nice hand, nice hand. You're like so Aww. steaming still, right? Because you yeah. just... Like you know, maybe maybe you sucked out when you had three big blinds, but he you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about the hundred big blind pot you just yep. lost uh, aces to kings and the guy spiking it. Yep. No, he would have had thirty three plus big blinds otherwise, and now he's <laughs> he's like, well, I'm back to five big blinds, but not exactly where he wants to be. We had uh, we saw David Yen open up aces under the gun previous round, but nobody really wanted a piece of that. Now we've got Brahman. Flopping top pair, obviously a relatively weak kicker, but you got to feel pretty good about your ace here. Nice trap. Uh, he, you know, he limped pre-flop. Didn't get greedy on the flop. Went for the check call. Got his opponent to bait out a bet, and uh, his opponent does pick up a jack, so he probably wants to check, I imagine, and then uh, play a river card. He does yeah. check. Uh, I guess Brahman, maybe he throws out like a little little tiny bet. I don't know. It's, it's hard to get value. He looks like he's going to try to induce, but uh, 
chips that little pot. But you know, Elis, you did you've been blessing him since last week, right? And he's got ten million chips. He's actually in third place right now after that Queen Jack suited him. Something about Scandinavian players that are very good at PLO. It's like I I don't know what the, what's in the water there, but they seem to create a couple of magical PLO players. And Elis Ooh. is doing very good at the No Limit tournament here as well. He's opening up seven six suited from uh, Under the Gun plus one, feeling adventurous over here. I'll tell you, man, Dave, Michael Watson just fought two sixes of five big blinds, and he would have been in good shape somehow against seven six suited. Um, David Yen now, that's a good three bet hand, ace jack suited from the small yeah. blind. It's against this kind of a stack size. Calling's fine too. Uh, he looks like he is going to make the call and uh, does flop a jack, and it's going to be real hard for him to lose this pot. I think yeah. Elis, he. He might bet this flop. He might check. Uh, he doesn't really have much. I would like to see him check personally. I just feel mm -hmm. like the the small blind call is quite strong in the sense that it hits the jack nine board reasonably well. So I like that he does check back that flop. And I would just probably wait for a river bet to consider firing a seven six. Um, I just give up. I know it's very weak, but I'd be like, you know what? This is not my board. I'm not winning this hand. And then on top of that, you're going up against somebody who can also make some lighter calls because David Yen does have 12 million chips, right? This is not Correct. somebody with four and a half or five million. I think Elis uh, did all right. I mean, he tried to get a little adventurous with the seven six. Sometimes you connect well with the board. This time he connected with absolutely nothing. I think there is no shame in giving up sometimes, Nana. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, King Queen. All right, that's gonna ship it in. Guess he gets it through. That's gonna feel pretty good, right? With five big blinds. <laughs> I think he's still pretty upset about the ace eight against the Queen Jack, but <laughs> yeah. I mean he is chipping up. Joker face ain't gonna do it. He knows that he's always behind there, so there's no point. <laughs> Good to see that the emoji game is on point so far for these guys. This is the second biggest prize pool we've had. This was a 5 million guarantee this time. So obviously the guarantee went up a lot because it is high roller week over a GG. Uh, but yeah, they absolutely smashed that with 581 entries. And Elis gets a walk. That's a great feeling with Jack 6. <laughs> it shows the Jack. <laughs> kind of pointless, but... We'll take it. Oh, next hand he gets aces. That's that's gotta feel good, Nana. You get a walk into aces. Oh yes. Yeah, it looks like uh you're probably not gonna win too many chips, but you know, it's a couple extra big blinds coming in by Nicholas Estet opening the 2.5x the ace three. Uh, imagine he's gonna three bet the two aces. I don't think flatting would be expected in this situation. That's a big three bet as well, right? Yeah, it's a pretty, I mean, it's a reasonable three, but they are playing deeper stacks. So you are going to see uh, sizes up a bit more because they are going to be getting better odds to to call. You don't want to make it like 1.5 million just gets destroyed post flop, right? Like they just flop a straight or yeah. something. But I thought like maybe a 1.8 or a 1.9. It's like, okay, you can maybe get a call and then you can start being aggressive on the flop. But Nicholas is like, nope, I don't want any of that. He earned his yeah. chips in the dirty way, but now he wants to protect them, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. But the thing is, um, in uh, these high-stakes tournaments, you got to keep your sizes consistent. Otherwise, people get some sick reads on you, right? Like, if I'm playing some a bunch of Roddy Dams, you know, I'm going to put a little bait three-bet out there, right? You guys are going to can't help <laughs> yourselves. But, you know, Elis, he's got to keep it consistent with his bluff sizing. Here's the ace knight. Okay, Watson's back in, potentially. Yeah, this is spot. honestly not that bad. If he wins this pot, he's got more chips than Joker face. Make stop pair. Just needs to avoid the kings at this point. No king. And Michael Watson is absolutely back alive. And that's he's not back. a king. So he doubles up 3.9 million. And Joker face is like, oh, come on. You're supposed to finish in seventh <laughs> place, mate. It gives us the so sick as well. You got to love it. <laughs> Yeah, like Joker Face makes money from people just busting, right? Like he's gonna have to get in, but he was thinking, feeling pretty good. Uh, Watson, you know, he's like, he's gotta feel good, right? He just won two all ins in a row. He could have had 11 million chips, but you know, 3.8, it's much better than, uh, well, how many big blinds did he have? Like three, what was the lowest he had? Three big blinds or something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. something like that. It's very low. 
Yeah, he went from <laughs> he went from like three to six, and now all of a sudden he's back to twelve. Hey, Joker face does pick up one as well though with his ace jack. Uh, that's gonna feel good for him. Now Michael Watson has ace jack, and if he, ah, uh, it's probably a bit too much. I think he can just shove and pick this one up as well. Yeah, looking pretty good. And now he's like, okay, I'm back to where I was. 4.5 million chips. That's pretty close. Well, almost, right? He was at 5-2, I believe, when he got it uh, almost all in. And obviously he was left with a little bit. But well done. Michael Watson staying alive. He had a 9th place, a ninth place, an 8th place. He's now guaranteed top 7. And he's still dreaming of a lot more. I mean, if he gets one more double up, Nano, he's back to nine. And then he's actually one of the biggest sacks at the table. So anything is still possible. Of course, anything's possible. It's it's poker, right? But some things are guaranteed, like I always say, you know? <laughs> like. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is going to be an interesting fight, right? Is it blind versus mm -hmm. blind? So ranges are very wide. Straight draw versus the bottom pair. Normally, if it's a raised pot, okay, like king four probably going to lose his pop but you know here it's a little different you know light call downs happen way more often in uh in these limp pots spades get there on the turn but i'm not sure if that's something that nicholas was very worried about i think if i was david yen i'd bet here again right there's no reason to slow down and he's gonna try his luck one more time obviously the four looks less and less pretty with way more yeah. combos of cards it's, that it's, beat it. it's a tough call to make without a spade to back you up uh, he does make the fold in. Nice bet. You know, you don't need a bet too big. Blind versus blind. Rangers are wide, so your opponent's going to have those fours and fives. But if it was a raised pot, you'd be like, okay, I'm more fighting the ace. You know, and that's when you don't see multi barrels as much. The VD's got two jacks. Come on, you got to win a pot sometime. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's going to take this one down, but I don't think he's going to get a whole lot out of it. I don't think Brahman or David Jen are going to be very adventurous here with their weak offsuit aces. Nicholas is going to get out of the way. And Joker face doesn't want to put his own tournament life on the line. He wants to see other people bust Nano. So that is basically an all-in, right? Wow, yeah. It's a little bit, I'm a bit Seven surprised. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised he opted to just practically jam all-in two jacks with that stack size. I would think it's strong enough to just go for a smaller raise, maybe induce some action. But, uh, you know, he's got a different game. That's what I was telling you in the pre-show. So we're going to see him uh, do things that maybe you don't expect. Well, if... Okay, now I wonder what Joker face is going to do. Because I'm pretty sure that he was going to go all in, obviously, if they would have folded it to him. But with David Yan opening, he's like, nope, I'm out of here with my ace four suited. He definitely had the best hand pre-flop. It's just a little bit tricky. It's always risky to put your tournament live on the line with these hands. It's like, I think I'm good, but I'm not loving it. Maybe I'll wait for a better spot. Mm, yes, exactly. The suited aces. They're good uh, three-bet bluff hands, but of course, like... When you get called, you're like, I hate my life. I hate my life. Um, Elis here, 9-3 offsuit. This is some two very bad hands. Uh, it's a pretty crappy spot. I probably would just mock the 9-3, but we'll see if he thinks he can get away with a limp or not. I feel like Elis doesn't like giving walks. He's like, I received a walk, and I had Jack-6 offsuit. If somebody would have raced to me, I would have folded. I highly doubt that Michael Watson is sitting on a monster here. <laughs> And he makes the raise with the 9-3 from the small blind. No walks given by Elis. You gotta love it. Yeah, it's, it's it's a strong play, man. Because, like, obviously, though, if he gets called, which he will get called a decent amount from the big blind, it's tough to play post-flop when you just got 9-3. You're just going to miss so much. But uh, nice. Uh, he just knows his opponent's going to fold a little bit more because of the situation. Kind of feeling this hand now, no? David Yen opening up from under the gun plus one with 10-7 suited, but the VD Kitai in the big blind has ace five. And I think he's obviously aware already that David Yen is going to get involved in a lot of pots. I think that, wow, he folds right. ace five. All right. All right. So what I've noticed right now is some of these guys are folding their big blinds a bit more, and that's because of ICM. Um, so... If I'm those my guys folding ace five off in the big blind, because there's two guys with about 10 big blinds, you're going to want to raise his big blind a bit more right now when he's at medium yeah. stack. The medium stacks are the guys who are a bit more handcuffed. Uh, they don't want to bust out before other people. They don't want to chip down and become one of those small stacks as well. So that's why big stacks, they have an advantage. They just, not just because they have more chips, because they can get away, get more folds, etc. But see, the difference in Broadman's style is that he's going to go see a flop here with the ace six. He's like, 
No, if he's three betting that uh, that garbage queen three off soon, man, he's not pulling <laughs> no a six off soon in the big play. Elis uh, does have the best. He's also sitting on the ace of spades, and that is a lovely card to have. When even though you don't flop a whole lot, it's nice to have the spade dream alive, and obviously you can use it for some bluffs as well. I definitely think he's going to continue betting here, and I think Brahman is just going to give this up without a spade. No need to continue there. And then uh, how you is just chipping up very smooth yeah. today. A very different situation. Last final table, he actually remained in the middle throughout the whole final table almost. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just all of a sudden had a bunch of chips but did lose the heads up match. Um, yeah, but today's a different day. You know, Elis, he's got chips. He's muscling his way through some pots. Uh, still playing quite solid. Um, I'm loving it. Don't think this is the hand to get involved with. Let's see what Michael Watson does though with roughly 10 big blinds, ace nine suited. If he does go all in, uh, I think Nicholas I don't, should fold here, right? He, yeah, he's not going to call. Um, I'd be very shocked if Nicholas would call the ace four suited here. It's just you you beat king queen, king jack, but you lose to a whole lot more. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit too much. You put yourself in kind of in a bad situation too if you lose this pot. Uh, it's a lot, just, man. Three point seven million. Like if he loses this, Michael Watson's got way more chips than him. Yeah, yeah he lets it go. I, would, I would have been very shocked if he, if he had made that call. Um, you know, he's solid players. They they don't go get reckless all of a sudden. They got the good discipline. Ace four suited does look pretty though. You hate to fold it. Like why didn't he just min raise so I can put in my one big blind, see a flop. Flop the world, a bunch of clubs, maybe a little gut shot, straight draw, or something like that. <laughs> Ooh, uh oh, Nicholas Osset showing call six this five. Yep, I think so, but I don't know if he, oh, he folds. Wow. Joker, Joker face. face is trying to ladder up, man. He, you know, I guess the difference is before he was sitting out, but now he's just sitting out while sitting at the computer. <laughs> uh, because uh, that that's a tight, tight fold. Um, yeah. I think he had to go for it. One, one thing I would do is if I'm the shortest stack, I, I increase my call range much more, you know, like, because it's hard hard to outlast people, right? If I was in the middle, if I had more chips than Watson, maybe I can find a fold somehow. But uh, it, I don't think he should have been folding that hand. That was ace four off suit though, right? Yeah, it's, it's just blind versus blind, yeah. 10 big blinds, big stack. Uh, they can no, jam I'm with so, you. I'm with so you. much stuff. Yep. I am with you. But he decided to let it go. Next round, I think David Janis is going to pick this one up. There's no need for Elis. It's like, the 9-3 was good to me. Maybe I can make some magic happen here with the 9-4, but obviously it would be very silly to get in any trouble here. Yeah, Joker face. Like, you got to wonder, right? Like, how many better spots than that are you going to get? Like, yeah, sure, mm. you might get ace-king, ace-queen next hand, and then you can just go all in from any position, but... You know how Nicholas is set plays as well. Small blind against big blind. He could... I almost feel like he could literally have any two cards. I think I think so. Very very possible. So Davidi's got king nine suited. I can't imagine him folding this hand. This hand is a little bit too good to be folding. Um, it's very very playable. Let's see what he opts to do. Maybe. He's, oh wow, he actually folds wow. king nine suited. Wow, I'm very very surprised. I, this is not the Davidi Katai. No, this is a new player today. Um, I would just tell you this, oh. Davidi Katai is respecting the ICM so hard right now because uh, yeah. I'm very, very shocked. Um, regardless, Lena 900, two queens, what a luck box. <laughs> well, don't say that, Nananoko, because I don't see anybody else holding an ace right now. I would have agreed with the luck box part if like, all the three players have some aces as well. Uh, there's a good chance that David Jan is going to call here, though, right? Like 1.4 million more. It is a bit hard to play ace-jack out of position, but with the amount of chips that David Jan has? It's possible. I, he might fold. It's not the greatest hand to call a three-bit out of position from under the gun versus under the gun plus one. You are dominated a lot. Unless mm -hmm. he thinks his opponent's up to no good. Okay. Um, looks like, you know, he's a solid player. I wasn't really expecting a call there. Ace-jack suited, I think, you can think about it, but, um, yeah. I think it's just like, if you look from the other point of view, you're like, oh man, this guy's got ace queen, ace king a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, what am I hoping for? Flop an ace and still lose, you know? Flop a jack, they have an over pair. I, then he shows the ace jack for some reason, back to back maybe. You're right. Uh, excellent play indeed by David Jan. 
the salt. Since he is the chip leader, maybe you can see a flop, but it would have been very hard to play that hand regardless. And sometimes it's better to just stay out of trouble. Gets a walk the next hand on the Asiak in the big blind. It's kind of funny. Shows it to the table as well. Ooh, so that's a big, big raise. He wants to get him back. Nananoko has got personal. The big raise is ideal, actually, though, because they're both quite big deep stack. You want to discourage the call. Say you make it like 800K, right? Like, again, yeah. some other guys would be doing. Uh, they really get see a flop out of position way too often. Um, so the big raise tries to discourage that. King three suited, though, might still come along. Uh, it is still a good hand to play. You do have a lot of chips to play for. He does make the call. Wow. And they both flop a bunch of medium strength stuff here. Uh, I do kind of like the king three a little bit better. Problem is, mm -hmm. queen jack 10, there's ace king out there, right? So you're like, uh, it's dicey. But that's what you want to see. You want to see a check when you're Nicholas Estet with this kind of a draw from your opponent. So do you think that Nicholas should bet here? Or would it be better? Uh, like, I feel like you should check. Checking. You should definitely yeah. be checking. I know yeah. sometimes thinking you see some weakness, you got to draw, you just auto bet. But on this board texture, you just got to be a bit careful. And you don't want to get blown off uh, another draw like this. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. David is going to check again on the turn. And the eight was obviously of no help to Nicholas. Thus, uh, still have Empty. the open-ended straight draw, but the diamonds are dead. This time he will bet. I do like him betting now because the fact that David Yan's checked twice seems so weak uh, mm -hmm. on Queen Jack 10, right? Like you could represent the ace king, you didn't do it on the flop, you didn't do it on the turn. What do you have? You probably have, and a queen probably would have bet that flop. It just seems like David Yan has one of those garbage hands or he has like a, a weak hand. Okay, does the deuce five suited jam here? If he knows his opponent's phone, an ace X offs to, he's definitely jamming, but I don't think he knows that yet uh. because it hasn't been 30 minutes. We have to keep in mind as well, Nicholas Folds. I actually think it's an all right decision because the blinds did go up as well. So Joker Face has even less at this point. And then he's already like investing more than, uh, well, 15% of his stack. And then I just think it's a little more likely that he does call eventually. I hope for Joker Face that he doesn't think that this is the moment to really go for it with King Nine because he's going to get snap called by Nicholas. I, th I saw the Joker face dude is so confusing when he got a walk. And it's a little bit confusing if you're the short. So you're right. not really expecting it, right? Because you're already hovering your cards over the muck pile, right? Just waiting to fold in. Oh, wow, I actually won the pot. Uh, but two fives here, it does let it go. So a lot of guys just playing a little bit tighter. And, you know, maybe that's a indicator because of the, the prize pool, right? Like this is bigger than normal for first place, $720,000. So pay jumps are bigger, and people are, are folding their big blinds a lot more. Having known that, if I'm these big stacks, I'm just bumping it up a lot. You know, like David Yan should be raising often. Nicholas uh -oh. should be raising often. It's just free chips. I have the feeling we're going to go for it. Michael Watson. I mean, he already has his personal best tonight. After a ninth and ninth and an eighth place, he made it top seven, but we know that he wants more. Cannot imagine a world where he's folding the tens here. So he's absolutely going to fully send it. And then it's only like 2.4 million more for David Yan, who is the chip leader. There's got to be a call, right, Nana? I think it's a side call. You're not like, oh, woohoo, this guy's bluffing me. But yeah, if Michael Watson, I'd definitely be calling him. You know, he's going to make some, shove out a little pair, some ace tens here and there. And here's a flip. And Ooh, a makes the walk. set. That is one hell. Okay. Oh, there are still do odds. Do not do it to Watson. He does not deserve it. <laughs> For a second, I was like, that could be an ace, actually. But it was a deuce. So Michael Watson get another double up. And he is totally back. After dropping to like three or four big blinds earlier, he's now got a pretty proper stack. The 10's making the set. Well done. And that means that we've got a new chip leader as well. Nicholas Ostad. He's back in the lead. Yeah, I mean, Watson, Watson deserves it, right? Because he's been yeah, getting yeah. punished so hard, and he's been making all these final tables and just getting nothing. Elis got Queen-10 suited, thinking about 3-betting Nicholas instead, I believe. Don't think he's mm -hmm. thinking about flatting. Uh, he is going to make the strong play, and it's going to work. Uh, I can't imagine Nicholas Estet, uh doing too much here if the ace sign off suit. You don't want to make make it 4 million, get shipped on, have to fold. It'll be a disaster. Uh, this... He's Elis, guys. He's, he's solid. You know what I have noticed though at these final tables is that as soon as Nicholas wins like a proper pot, he's like, all right, this is it. I'm the new captain now.
but he's got a hard time really carrying through that momentum. People always wake up with hands or they stand up against him. And he's like, oh, you know, he went, he went up to 13, dropped to nine. Now he got up to 13 again. He's like, all right, this is it. And he gets three bet immediately and he's forced to let it go. And now Elis is getting awfully close to him in chips. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Sometimes you got to fight against those ship leaders. If they don't resist against you, you know, they're going to they're gonna get punished. Uh, Davidi is going to pick up a little bit of chips here. Yeah, standard shove, I'd say, ace-8 suited. You're one of the shortest stacks. It's a bit scary. You don't want to get called. But picking up, like, you know, there's 840k in the middle. Like, Davidi Kitai just increased his entire stack by, like, 20%. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. ace do suit. I'm not too sure what he's going to do up here because, he, yeah, he does fold because I have seen him play quite tight today. Um, battle of the, the blinds here. David Yan, does he go for a bigger raise? Um not too sure. He looks no. like he's just going to fold. So things change, man. When you lose a chip yeah. lead, you're just like, you know, I'm no longer the boss. I'm just folding now. Like, this is a an interesting final table. I, I'm thinking right now, though, I feel I love in the way Elis is playing. I think he's playing really nice today. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Nicholas' stats very solid, but that guy seems to always run good and just win some chips here and there. Uh, I'm, I'm liking, I, I think Elis is going to do well today. I don't know. Just the vibe I'm getting so far. What are your thoughts on the play so far today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, he's got a couple of big double ups. He did get a little fortunate with the Queen Jack against the Ace 8, but I, I, I obviously think that he's on the right track. But last week, he should have won it, man. He really was looking so mighty fine. He was a chip leader. He had a dominant lead. He was playing well. Didn't get it done. So I, I think there are way too many chips still left in play. To say that he is going to uh, <laughs> ship it, but he's looking good for sure. Looks like a, We've got, uh, a new free roll coming. Tell them about it, Roddy. Yep, with a lovely password as well. So guys, all you have to do to participate in these free rolls is just head over to the GG Poker client, go to the free roll section of the client, and then you guys should see a free roll starting in nine minutes. Once again, we're giving away five twenty-two dollar tickets, and the password for this free roll is NanoNoco. N -A -N -O oh, beautiful. N-O-K-O. <laughs> Don't sound so sad. Don't sound so sad, Roddy. Uh, I feel like the password could have been Roddy as well, but you know what it is. If they want to make it Nanonoko, I can live with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Action. two jacks here. Going to get three bed Lena again, and we'll see what he opts to do here. Um, some people play passively because they don't want to bust a piece for others. I wonder, oh, I'm curious to see how Elis takes it. I'll tell you this though. If Nicholas is set, flops a three somehow, he ain't, Elis ain't winning the pot because there's no more jacks in there. He is going to call. Okay. I'm actually a little bit surprised to not see him uh, three bet the jacks on the button, but maybe afraid that Nicholas gets super crazy and just sh uh, shoves it all in or something. I don't know. I, but... Yeah, I do think the jacks three bet is fine i do like yeah. the call better in this scenario because of uh joker face and davidi are quite short you're in a very good position uh he's what top top two stack right now like it does make sense for him to just call there uh if he was in the middle like fourth fifth definitely be three yeah. betting and, and just trying to take it down pretty well the jacks do still take it down as the three so obviously did not improve there the king gotta be a little bit scary right but Get it done. Nicholas Estad is like, all right, round two, fight. This time I've got pocket fives. Wonder what Davidi Kitai is going to do here. Ace-10 offsuit? What would you do? I agree. I have, I'm, I'm wondering too because uh, he's been playing quite tight today and like just really trying to ladder himself. Um, so he does wow. fold again and uh, I'm not surprised. Um, but, you know, I'll tell you, you put that Ace-10 in some other people's hands, they, they might just ship it in on chip leaders just thinking they're going to overfold him. He, his opponent would have folded uh so yeah right now it does look like davidi katai is just trying to outweigh joker face but that's a hard guy to outlast because he's folding ace three offsuit <laughs> in the big blind shoves what that's going to happen though is it's going to turn you into a super short stack and that guy might just double up when he finally gets it all in and you're going to feel in a bad spot if i'm davidi katai i would be looking for more spots to maybe re-steal on some of these bigger stacks the thing yeah. is, sometimes you're waiting and you're waiting, right? You're like, okay, finally I'm going to make a play. But then you only have like nine big blinds left. And then you second guess yourself because you're like, oh, man, I'm so short. They're going to call me anyways. And then you kind of regret that you passed up some 15 big blind reshoves and stuff like this. So uh, it is the nature of the game. Things are obviously unpredictable in poker. But, uh, 
you know, I, I've I've been in these situations and I'm like, I'm gonna outlast some guy and then like, oh my god, he doubles up and I now I wish I shoved earlier. I mean, like it's going to be me, isn't it? I'm gonna be the guy who goes on it. <laughs> you know, um, I actually thought that there was maybe a spot for Joker face to go for it. Like he's got six percent VP, I believe now it's four, but he had Queen Nine suited. It's obviously not a dream hand, but I feel like his shoves will get a lot of respect because everybody knows he's been very tight. And Queen Nine suited can flop all right. He would have obviously flopped best there as well, but I actually would have liked to see him try there. I, I agree with that. His shoves are going. But you know what? You just wait for the ace king suited. <laughs> and the thing is, his opponent's going to be forced to, to call based on the stack sizes, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's not great with 7 6 suited, but it's only it's six big blinds total. Maybe 7 6 suited folds. I don't know. But um, I, mm. this guy hasn't played a single hand. Maybe the 7 6 suited does fold. I'm not too sure here. Pay 2 million to play for 5.1. You know you're behind, but you can flop really well. I think I'd call. I think this is one of these moments where I'm calling. We'll see. Let's try to get lucky. I've already been getting lucky so far. Elias <laughs> makes the fold, though, and against the Ace King, that was probably. Uh, the it was best a thing just one done. time that got him, right? Like the guy says, cries just one time. You're like, fine, you can have it. Emoji worked. It's kind of sad for Joker Face, though, because now he does get his big hand, his Ace King, and now he's still stuck at 3.1 million. Blinds will keep going up. Obviously, in the top left side, you guys can see when the blinds go up again. They go not go up over time, but uh, it's just based upon the amount of hands we play at these final tables. Okay, this is it. Okay, I love to see. See, Mike Watson's like, I'm not scared. I'm going to reship yeah. the ace three on you. That's that's what I want to see from, uh, you know, the, the, the shortest, not the shortest deck, but some of the quite short stacks. So you, you got so much fold equity against these guys. They're just raising. Come on, Ace-8 suited. You got to go with this, right, Joker face? I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? I have the oh, feeling wow. he won't. Yeah, I, I think I would, especially against Nicholas. Like, if it was anybody else opening in an early position, I'd be like, ah, oh, maybe I'm no good here. But Nicholas is opening every second hand at this point. Then I think you got to go for it. I don't... I understand. It's your tournament live. It's scary. It's a final table. It's a big spot. But if you just know that you're going to be good here, like very, very often, then I think you got to close your eyes and just go for it. Man, those, I'll tell you, Joker Face and Davidi Qatar are grinding each other out so hard because Davidi also folded 10 9 suited in the big blind with that stack size. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not loving my pick right now because I didn't realize he was just going to play so ICM. Like, this is really, really strong ICM. Um, I, I'm not loving it personally, but it is what it is. It's his money. He can play how he likes. Elis got King Jack suited. Good hand mm -hmm. to consider three betting. He has been doing it sometimes. He knows his frequency has been a little bit high on a three bet, so that's what he's thinking about. Like, okay, should I do it again? But I he haven't knows. seen Nicholas Estet battle once yet against these three bets. So three betting him is actually way, way better, and I like it from Elis. Joker face is like, come on, guys, just just get it in. Get it in and hold Nicholas. But nope, Nicholas is going to give up the ace five suited. I can get behind that. I love the way that Elis is playing. I mean, last week, he made a very good impression on us. So far tonight, obviously a little bit lucky early on, but he's just making a lot of correct uh, plays pre-flop. And no, no, this could be fun as well. King Jack suited, small blind against big blind, ace five suited. It looks like they're going to just see a little flop. Oh, wow, just shoot no. again, ace five suited. That is a bold, strong play. That is so goes. sick, actually, because, like, David Yen has 11 million chips. Imagine yeah. if he is sitting on a monster and he just snap calls you. Ela's getting aces again, by the way. Second time in, like, 10 minutes. Broadman. I'm curious if Broadman gives some action. He does. He's going to let it out, and, wow, everyone's just going to fold. But, uh, look, Nicholas Stett plays really strong and solid poker. He's raising. He knows he should be. Elis is the one three betting him, and he's getting away a fail every time because Nicholas said he doesn't really kind of fight back, right? Because he knows like he shouldn't be. That's what the guys, other guys, should be doing, right? Mike Watson fought back against Elis, and you know he mm -hmm. wants him just with Davidi. He's not doing anything. Broadman man after that queen threw out, so he's kind of waiting around too. Joker face. I'm telling you, this could be a very different situation if Davidi could die and Joker face just reships on some people. His stack sizes would be Ooh. a little bit different right now. Nice flop here for Elis, I would say. Even though there are no hearts, he does flop the open ender. But yeah, I am uh, in 100% agreement. I gotta say though, like that was a crazy move by Nicholas to do that <laughs> against David. Like if David Yen has like five million, five and a half, I can be like, oh yeah, you know, you're probably good here. But against a guy with 11 million chips, it's like, 
Man, that is so gnarly. Let's focus on this end, though, as this part is getting big as well. 3.6 million. 9A does not improve. Yeah, it is a bet on the flop. Over card on turn. Nicholas doesn't have anything. Uh, so he's going to give it up. And, uh, well, this is... Uh -huh. You just got to bet, Elis. So the question is just how much? Because if you bet too small, you get looked up by some ace highs, some little pairs. It, it does kind of suck. Uh, I'm thinking like half the pot. I don't know. You don't want to be like 600K and just get looked up by something small. You, you got to bet a little bit more. Um, but you don't need to bet too big, I think, because a 10 will look you up no matter what and kind of burn your chips. You just got to bet enough that the ace highs will just fold to you. It is obviously very scary, but Elis knows that he is going to have to bet here. No, oh, wow. he gives he up. Checks. Oh, wow. He gives up. That... Now, Nicholas is like, should I bluff here? Or is King High good? He's like, no, Nicholas, King High is good. And he's going to take it on. That's a big pot, Nano. 3.6 <laughs> million. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've been loving the way Elis plays. I don't know if I'm in love with that last one. I do think he could have got it because Nicholas is just going to uh -oh. raise so much garbage and he beats nine high. I think Elis is in the. I think annoying. Joker Face is in trouble. No, no. I think Watson's Joker Watson's got Ace King. You see that? Yep. Ooh. I think Elis folds. Yeah. Because yeah. of. He don't want to put in 2 million chips and get reshoved on. You don't want to rejam. Nope. I mean, imagine if he calls in and Nicholas goes all in and you have to fold. You just burn 2 million for no reason. But obviously, Michael Watson is not going anywhere. And that means that Joker face, his tournament live is on the line. Ace queen versus ace king. And he needs a queen or running hearts. He's not getting that. It's a queen and a queen only on the river. Can we get paint? No. Nope. He got he did get those two pay jumps, right? And that's the only two pay jumps he got. So the first three hands those two guys busted out. Mm-hmm. Well, Michael Watson uh, is now actually back to 10, 11 million chips. That's pretty sick. What a recovery by Michael Watson as he once again improves his personal best at the high roller super millions. This could be a fun hand. Ace five, ace king, ace king. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I bet you Davide Katai is feeling really good about all those uh, folds he made earlier because he, he did outlast the guy he was trying to outlast. Did get that pay jump. Now he's got ace king with no stack. Um Elis would have won that pot if he got a little bit frisky with the two sevens, though, right? He would have flopped top set that last hand. Um, oh, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, he would have won the three-way all-in. But, you know, not to be uh -huh. results-oriented. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a correct fold, though. Like, I, I, I don't see any reason for him to get ever in that much trouble with the sevens there. It's just so unnecessary. I agree. I have the feeling we're going to see a lot of hearts. <laughs> I do see some. Next two of them. All right. Fortunately for uh, the VD, it stays at two. I like no, how you try to punish him with the hearts. No, no, no. But none of the other guys had hearts. And I was like, well, they got to be somewhere in the deck, Nano. So, you know, we saw a couple of them, but it stayed Ooh. at two. How are these guys, these short stacks getting for a little bit fortunate right now? Huh? The VD, Ace King versus Ace Jack. Nice spot for a clean double up coming up. Yeah, it is probably not folding here. It's like you had Ace King last hand. What do you have this time? You know, nobody nobody gets Ace King back to back, right, Nana? <laughs> right, so actually, after uh, David is gonna double up here, right? Guaranteed. He's like pretty much a lock because it's my pick. <laughs> I can feel. <laughs> All right, a flop is safe. Needs to avoid a jack. Well, we could chop this one up as well. With a deuce or a four, we are going to chop this one up. And with a jack, Elis wins it all. But none of that happens. And that means that VD chips up to 7.2 million. All right, we've got one hell of a final table on our hands here, Nana. Yeah, everyone is actually in. Like two queens now for Davidi Kitai. This guy, dude, this guy's being rewarded, right? He's outlasted Joker face. The poker gods are like, you know what? Let's send you your chips back now. Now he's going to get two queens. Uh, it doesn't look like he'll get much more action, but in this situation, look at the ch chip stack. We're going to have a bunch of guys with 10 million chips. One guy mm -hmm. with a little bit more, 15 million, one super short stack. They're all going to wait for the short stack to play. So Nicholas is that should be opening a bunch more right now and try and chip up while Brawman is still in the tournament. 
I like how Elis always shows a random card for no reason at all. But it's actually so sick. You get Ace King, Ace King, then you get Queens as well. Michael Watson opens there after Davidi Kitai just wins a big pot, gets three bet on. It's probably thinking like, ah, I know what you're doing, Davidi Kitai. You got some chips and now you're going to put in the three bets. But he actually had it again. It's pretty sick. Be careful, David Jan. We know Nicholas is set as crazy. <laughs> well, Nicholas is set, set a tone that last hand when he, his opponent lived. He just insta ship 35 big blinds. So David, David Yan's thinking, what do I do now, Ace? Now he's just going to ship it himself to kind of just stop his opponent from making that play. I think if Nicholas is didn't do that uh, jam last time, I don't think he's jamming the Ace Nine. I think he's limping to try to see a flop. Now, now I'm getting nervous looking at the things that David and Nicholas are doing to each other. Like it's actually giving me anxiety. It's like you guys have so many chips. There is no reason to be playing these spots, but uh, I gotta love it. Bring the fire to each other. Michael Watson opening up. Ace King suited under the gun, and he's just gonna take this one down. Man, what what a battle those two are having. That's insane. Yeah, it's really close, man. Four guys with ten million, one with fourteen. Uh, two tens here, gonna get some action. Mike Watson, he probably is gonna see a flop of Jack Ten. I know Brown Man is short, but you got you got twenty five big blinds of a reasonable hand. It, mm -hmm. I be these guys have been making tight folds today in the big blind. I don't feel like Mike Watson is that type of player no. though. Jack Ten. Michael Watson in. has not played scared at all so far, actually. So I'm absolutely expecting him uh, to throw in one big blind here to see if you can flop something good. Oh, that's. <laughs> One of the worst flops you could ever see with Jack 10. <laughs> yeah, you're like, hmm, cool. Okay, just hurry up and bet so I can get out of here. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Can I fold out of position? Just take it. Like, I know how this is going to go anyway. I'll check. You bet I fold. What if I just fold right now and give up? That's kind of sad, though, because, you know, you get Jack 10 in a big blind, you're like, this hand can flop, all right. <laughs> you can envision all these great flops. Maybe okay, flop let's pair. forget about that. Look at these hands. It's two nines. Oh, no. Oh, wow. What? Nicholas is Why? dead. You're going to... Okay, here's a question. Does two nines make the call here? Oh, my God. I this actually don't think spot. he will, but Davidi Kitai will, though. Like I don't We know Davidi's is... in. The VD is in, but does Elis make the call? Oh, wow. I'm trying to think. I don't think he does. He's got, he oh, makes he does. the call. The correct call, though. That's a correct call of two nines. Now Davidi Katai has got Ace King. He's thinking, I know he's hey. loving the situation, but he's also thinking, should I maybe fold and let these guys bust each other out? The answer is no, in my opinion, because when Nicholas Estet jams 35 big blinds and Elis still yeah. calls, Elis is crushing Nicholas Estet's range. So... Elis is very likely to double up, in my opinion, uh, against Nicholas Estet's range. Well, I can also imagine that Davidi Kitai is very worried about what Elis has here. It's like, what if he does have aces or kings, right? Like, it's always unlikely because you're like, oh, you're blocking that. But it's possible because that, that call looks very strong from the button. I imagine understand. if you're Brahman here, by the way, Nano. If you're Brahman, you're like, Nicholas, take it all. Take it all. Yeah, I know. He's thinking, because Davidi, though, has been super ICM cautious here. Man, there's a yeah. chance he folds. Most players would never fold this spot. But I'm telling you, wow, he, he folds. folds the ace king so sick. That's very sick. He's in, it's a good fold so far. An ace king or a queen, he would have won. Nicholas Estet needs the six, though. Can he get the six? That could be a six. It could be a six. Do not. No. Oh. Seven. <laughs> the the oh. Little, little pip in the middle came out yeah. of nowhere. Wow. So Davidi actually survives somehow uh, with with the ace king fold. That's so sick. He's so ICM aware right now. And that's why I was like a little surprised. Nicholas Estet just kind of, do you think that's a blow up? What are your thoughts on that? I don't think it's a blow, but it's once again, I think it's very unnecessary. It's like sixes in such an earth. Like if this was from the small blind, I'll be like, okay, whatever, you know, that's fine. Or the button, but from such an early position, you've got a big stack, but there are a couple of big stacks behind you. Yeah, I would have liked to see him not do that. Yeah, well, that's, and that's not being result oriented. I just like I don't mind opening, you know, if you just want to open and try to take it down. But just shoving that many bigs with sixes. Oh. Look at the situation now. Him and Brahman are in a competition now. It's not him versus David Yan Nilas. It's him versus the shortest stack. 
Broadman's out of Queen Seven suited. I would love to see him maybe consider calling. I don't know. I guess these guys are just really waiting each other out today. It's a very different final table. But man, you should you have picked sick, Elis Carson in. Yeah, but you know what's sick? If Elis does fold, I am convinced that Davidi calls, right? Like, of if course. Elis folds, then Davidi calls. And then Nicholas has said his shove actually would have worked because his sixes would have helped against the ace king. <laughs> that is insane to think about as well. Yeah, but you know, you. I told you, Elis is a crusher. He's not. He's just read the situation perfectly. If you re think about it, Nicholas, what does he have that beats two nines? Ace ten. He doesn't even beat Ace ten, right? He's, he's a little bit behind. So like two nines crushes that thirty five big blind jam. I know you have twenty five big blinds with with two nines. It was just an amazing call, and a lot of guys mm -hmm. would not call this that we've seen at these final tables. This yeah. shows you why Elis is really big crusher. And, you know, I believe he shipped some $25,000 tournament um, so recently uh, somewhere. And there's a reason why, because he's making big calls like that. You know, like, th look, ICM is important. We talk about it all the time. But you know what? We also talk about the top three spots is where all the money at. 720 k up top. Or do you want a 50 k pay jump, potentially? Elis has put himself in that position for that top three. Nicholas Set has put himself in a position for sixth place now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we saw Michael Watson make a magical comeback, so I'm not counting him out yet. Roman has Ace King. He's going to go for it. I don't think he's going to get any action, though. Oh, oh man, what a sick hand. Because, yeah, if, if either spots, Davidi calls, he's out. Nicholas is the overwhelming chip leader. Brahman gets his ladder that he's been waiting for. What a fun first hour this has been of the 23rd. High Roll is Super Millions. Obviously, a 10k buy-in event, as you guys can see. This tournament is always played on the Sunday evening until the final nine. And we broadcast the final table live on the Tuesday. Hopefully, you guys are having a lot of fun. We've got one more free roll coming up as well. It starts a little bit later. You guys will hear more about it soon. Nanonoko is going to take a break. I'll take a quick break as well. And after that, we'll be back to continue our coverage as we are down to six. Stay tuned. Make sure to uh, follow or subscribe. To the youtube channel because we are now only on youtube we might go back to twitch eventually but for now make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications as well so you guys can see whenever we are live with the coverage of the heads up match between daniel and doc as well stay tuned we'll be right back
All right, guys, the clock is almost at zero, which means we will continue our coverage of the 23rd edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Hopefully, you guys are having as much fun as we are having. No, no, this has been one hell of a final table so far. I feel like you, a part of you is just so sad that Nicholas has said lost all his chips because you picked them. And mm -hmm. <laughs> he's in such trouble. And you're like, man, well, if Elis folded, he would have beat the VD Katai and things would be... I mean, like you said, that was a tough hand. It was a very good call from Elis. I think we both yeah. agree. It was a tough call to make. Um, and... I'll tell you, there's a lot of guys that, that has been to our Super Millions final tables that would have folded to two nines, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just gotta you just gotta go go for hey. your gut feeling and, and get to that top spot. It's a good way to resume the break though. Nicholas picks up the first two rounds. I mean, increasing his stack okay. by like 1.8 million. But this is a battle. Our two guys are going at it, right? Like Davidi can't be folding an ace queen here. This guy just no. shoved three hands in a row. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he will call. I don't see any... Well, one queen is out. Michael Watson is sitting on a queen. But obviously still three aces. And two other queens to hit. Could make some straights as well. Uh, Davidi has been tied, but there's no way he's folding this. I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. I mean, we've seen, he's hit fold ace king, that one big one. That one's a little bit more understandable because of the multi-way, but still crazy. It's yeah. actually really crazy. Ace, queen here... He, he, Please don't fold Davidi. Let's battle it out. Me and Roger Dam fighting in this one, right? Like our two guys. If he calls, it's a big pot, by the way. If Nicholas would win, he's back to 11 million, which is almost where he was at. But it's going to be a tough one. Let's see what Davidi decides to do. There are two more people behind him. He does make the call. Ace Queen offsuit against Pocket Sevens. A good old race. All right. A four is good now as well. Oh, so far, man. so good for Nicholas. Needs to avoid an ace queen or a four. Can Lena he avoid is all back? those? He's no. not back. He's out. He's out. And I've got my guy's got chips now. <laughs> oh, oh, Nicholas Ostad eliminated in sixth place. Will walk away with two hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars. But he is definitely going to think back of the hands where he shipped in the sixes. That means we're down to five, and Brahman makes another pay jump, man. This guy is quietly just lathering it up, and he has now guaranteed himself $342,000. That's pretty... Uh, wow, I can't believe Nicholas is dead as out. He was chip leader. I know. And now he's in sixth place, and it's so sick. But it's just so... I mean, look, Nicholas is dead won a lot of money in this tournament, 280-something thousand. That's a lot of money. Because uh, we've had champions win like 330k or so, right? But yep. it's just obviously very disappointing uh, it, given the situation. Bra man, man. Bra, Bra man's pretty kind of funny because like he threw bet that queen three offsuit right early yeah. against the guy and he hasn't played a hand since. And he's got multiple pay jumps, two deuces. I'm shipping it in. You got nine, seven you got bigs. Seven bigs, five handed, shortest stack by a margin. I'm shipping in. If I'm E-list parsing in, I'm calling him off. Okay, he is going to go for it. Let's see what E-list decides to do. It does make the snap call. Ace-10 against Deuces. I have the feeling this is it for Brahman. Well, the flop is good. Very good, even. It is very Just good. Just an ace or a 10. Oh, it's a deuce. Dude. Makes the set. Didn't need it, but it's still nice to get there. 8.1 million. The Ukrainian stays alive. Elis made a mistake though. He used the I want to call after he called. Like the timing of the emoji was off, Elis. You gotta choose the the right one at the right time. Like <laughs> my last hand would be perfect. Rama next uh, hand immediately opens up King Jack offsuit under the gun. The Vidikita is sitting on Queen Jack suited in the big blind. He's got more chips than he's ever had. Let's see how he uses them. Hmm. Flops a gut shot. But yep. no diamonds. It's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I know you get a little sad when you're player bus and when you don't see backdoor draws. You're like, oh, <laughs> not exciting. You've got me figured out, Nana. That's that's who I am in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, it's funny as well because obviously I I looked at Elis and I was like I could pick Elis, but Elis came in to this final table with eighth ten place. big blinds tonight. He came in ten big in eighth place indeed. I was like, yeah, I can't possibly make that prediction because then I'll. <laughs> I'll be stuck to one winner forever. And I was like, you know what? Nano always says that Lena's not going to win it. I was like, I actually think tonight is the night. 
That's right. I told you. What did I say? I said that he hasn't won it in four times yet. He's not going to ship in. He did not. He did it actually even worse than I expected. Two aces for Watson. What a dream scenario. But uh, not going to get much action. But he does. He's going to pick up a little 2.2 big blinds extra. Yeah. I mean, all of these spots just feel so big compared to the stack sizes that we're working with. The only one who can really afford to lose a couple of pots is Elis. For everybody else, it's going to hurt real quick. Even Davidi Katai, who is second in chips right now, has 21 bigs. Like, yeah, that, that's all right. But you don't want to lose four or five. Well, actually, I didn't realize how close the situation is. Everyone's got 10 million chips, 20 big blinds, and an Elis with the big stack. Um, so now Watson opened up the king nine. I like it, but it's not going to work. Broad man, ace jack suited. Good reshuffle. He's going to go all in. Yeah, I think he's just going to go all in. I think it's an excellent play. Two million in the middle at this point. Just go for it. Okay, Ooh, I don't know. I'm, I don't like that. Uh, this is why you let your opponent outflop you. Very, very weird. Uh, yeah. I think in this situation, a bunch of guys with the same stack, their calling ranges actually go down a bit more. Uh, Reshub would have been just so, so strong. And like, yeah, I don't, I don't like it personally. Uh, what, what do you make of the check on the flop by Michael Watson? Um, interesting. I Maybe mean, he's a little bit confused. He doesn't want to get jammed in on. Uh, the standard probably is to bet, but I would say from a GTO perspective, you probably do want to check your worst kings, and King Nine is probably the exact worst king possible here. So you kind of like mm -hmm. balance your check back range, but you know. Some of those things, maybe oh. not. Wow, it's a, this hand's a disaster. Yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> I'm glad it's you just, say so, Nano, because I'm like, what the hell is happening in this hand? I was like, none of this really makes any sense, but Brahman does get there on the river with his ace jack. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't mean disaster as in that you played it bad. It's just like not what you ex expect. Like they each could have won the pot in many different ways, right? But yeah. it is Brahman that's going to be winning this pot. Uh, I think Watson has to just outright fold here. I just, this doesn't beat anything, really. Unless he knows something about Brahman that I don't, that he thinks he flats like 6-7 or something. Uh, you're getting a good price, but you really just don't beat much. From a small blind flatting range, you think of pocket pairs, and you think of uh, broadways. Broadways obviously beat you. Pocket pairs, they're probably not betting the turn. So, yeah, it's a good fold. <laughs> Well, Brahman picks up a very big pot, and he is now, uh, is he second in chips? Yes, he is. Wow. From the shortest stack for an hour straight to now being second in chips, that's going to feel really good for him. I like how Elis shows his nine, even though he had a three there as well. What I like about Elis is that he actually strikes me as somebody who's generally still having fun playing online poker. Like, that's obviously, right. these guys are grinders. They're making a lot of money. But he actually seems to be really enjoying himself at these final tables. Yeah, I was going to say, the tone at this final table is very, very serious. Um, you know, the guys are playing some, they're like really thinking what's a tight fold to make, stuff like this, big pay jumps. But Elis is there just, just chilling with his emojis. You know, he happened to have a big stack, but he does this with a short stack as well. Uh, it's a very different mode. And that's maybe why he can make that call of two nines, right? He's more like, you know, I'm playing the game. I'm making the right decisions, having fun, whereas everyone else is just trying to knit each other up a little bit, you know? And Mike Watson does defend King Queen. Uh, and they, it's kind of funny because, like, he has a really good hand, but, like, just it's a little sad. No back doors, right? I don't know if you have a cell phone near your microphone or something, but it, I'm kind of hearing a weird signal, so I don't know if that's okay. coming from you, but I will just to double that check. Away. I'm not yeah, sure if it's no over it. it. It sounded like it, at least, but I don't know if it was. I, you know, just we'll double see. checking. It's gone now, so maybe it helped. Who knows? Michael Watson is going to make the call here from the small blind with King 4 offset. Yeah, I hear something too. I think. But on, onto this hand real fast. King 8, debating shoving. You're just wondering how weak is uh, Mike Watson's limping range does check. And once you check that flop, uh, pre-flop, you can't represent an ace ever. So it it'll be uh it could be interesting if Watson wanted to be a little bit aggressive. Michael Watson has had a very interesting final table so far. Where he's like 
lost pretty much all of his chips in the beginning of it, then actually got back, but now all of a sudden he does find himself as the shortest stack again. And these blinds have gone up so quick. Big blind now being half a million. He knows if he loses this hands, he is down to 10 bigs. Not a comfortable place to be in. They both make the nuts on the river. Uh, this is going to be a little dramatic. We're going to act a little bit. How much do I bet? How much do I raise? But I think the moment that Michael bets and Davidi is going to raise, I think uh, they already know that they are going to chop this one up. This is where Davidi is praying. It's like, please have like two pair or something. Have top, t <laughs> you know, it's never going to be top two, I guess, but. I think that uh, Michael will know. Like He's not even shoving. That says enough. It's like, yeah, we both have a king. Let's move on to the next hand. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, it is pretty funny. Um, let's see here. Bunch of garbage. Ramon gets a walk. He's like, well, made it this far. Decides to show the ace as well. And this is where it gets a little bit tense, right? Like, obviously, I think we're looking at Michael Watson, who probably needs to make a move soon. You could say the blinds can go by once, but you don't really want to sit out two entire orbits, because then even when you double up, you're still the shortest stack by far. Uh, David Jen has been a little quiet as well over the last 45 minutes. David Yen get, did get fifth place the previous time he final table. There's five left. I don't know. Seems like a story coming up, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Two deuces. I'm thinking Davidi might limp the button. I don't know why. He gives me this vibes like he wants he wants to to limp the button a little bit. But uh, raising seems fine. Maybe he's just thinking about open jamming as well. well okay, outright fold. I mean, wow. It, it's hard to predict this player, and uh, right now he's just like, I'm going to outlast everyone. He does have, somehow in second place, I don't know how Davidi did it. He's somehow, <laughs> in, oh, because he knocked out uh, Lena 900, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm uh, just thinking, like, he's, he's somehow in second place. I don't know. Queen on the river was a beautiful sight if you're on Team Davidi Kitai tonight. Let's see what happens in this one. David Jan probably feels like he would love to pick up a couple pots again, but we know that it never comes easy when you go up against Elis. Elis sitting here with the ace four suited. Maybe Elis yeah. just ships it in. That's kind of been the play way people have been playing so far. He's got a different yeah. approach. He's like, I know sometimes people wake up with hands. So I'm not going to over overplay my hand and just lose all my my chips. And it seems fine to me. But they both flop a pair. No hearts, though. I wouldn't be upset if Elis decides to just check this one. Bottom pair. It's tempting to bet, though, too, because your hand is so vulnerable. And then, like, say you check and you don't improve on a turn and someone bets out until you don't know whether you should call or not. So it's kind of yeah. like, I just bet now and put my one chip in and hopefully I just take it down. David just makes the call. 10 on the turn. Doesn't really change anything, but does make it a little more scary for both players. Let's see what Elis decides to do at this point. I mean, could pretend that he had a 7 8, flopped the open ender, but he doesn't want to go there. He's going to check it back on the turn. Let's see what David does on the river. I think they just both try and check this one down. They, I don't think Elis thinks he's ever going to win, though, but he does occasionally win against like a trapped ace jack, ace queen. Not often, but occasionally. Um, there's a bet from David Yan. That's actually a very thin value bet, but it's trying to make it look like he's trying to bluff. Ace. Hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, good fold, bet. good fold. <laughs> I'm actually not exactly sure what to make of that bet, but David Yan does take it down. He did have the best hand all along. On to the next one as Davidi wakes up with Ace King suited. And we take a look at the shortest stack at this final table, who's sitting on Ace Six suited in the big blind. This could be fireworks, Nana. Yeah, I do think Watson's probably just going to call. I personally would. I think David E. Katai has been giving up a lot of spots pre flop. Therefore, his range is stronger. Therefore, uh, you know, it's just less fold equity. And. He does flop a little piece. Mm -hmm. Little gut shot. 
probably sad there is no diamond. Just with one diamond, his hand would look so much better right now, Nana. You're, you're definitely right about that. I'm just wondering if Mike Watson should have just open shipped the flop. Nine big blinds remaining. It is an overbet shove, yeah. which is a little bit excessive. Um, but I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't have minded it though, because Davidi has been C betting a little bit more often though, when he was involved with just some ace highs. Um, he's going to check again. Davidi has been playing very cautious tonight. Yeah, he really has been very, very, very cautious. Um, but he probably going to win the pot because Mike Watson thinks, look, can't bluff. No reason really to bluff. He does beat King Hides and stuff. Um, yeah, interesting because uh, he could have potentially won that pot. He just open shipped that flop. But mm. is it risk too risky? I'm not too sure. I mean, it is bad news. Now he loses 600,000 additional chippies and he's down to eight big blinds. I'm just still right. wondering how Davidi could die in second place. I know he's my <laughs> pick to win it today, but man, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised right now. <laughs> Well, this helps as well, just receiving a walk, even though you would have probably defended a small race with the King 8 suited. But, I mean, he's cruising. He's staying out of trouble. Uh, he's, he's definitely playing... staying out of trouble, yep. Yep, he's playing very conservative, keeping pots small if he can. He's bringing back the small ball poker, Nana. <laughs> to Daniel Negreanu. Daniel Negreanu is just rubbing off on everyone. But Daniel doesn't play small ball anymore. He's playing big ball, big chips, uh, heads up with the, the big man Doug Polk there. Um, See... So Seven five. Oh, that's interesting. I guess he tries to limp, but uh, I don't know. Davidi just throws some curveballs here and there sometimes. Okay, okay he's now he's raising. He yeah. yeah, he's a very situational player. If you've noticed, um, I think he's realized Brahman's been playing quite tight. I've got yep. the chips now. He's got less chips than me. He should fold to me more, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, He's actually uh, very close to Elis's chip stack. Yeah, Elis has been cooling down a little bit. Has not really been able to pick up a lot of chips. If Davidi opens this one, though, I'm sure that he will face some uh, resistance. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Davidi raises here that David just ships it in, right? Ace 10 against the guy who's been opening up a little bit more over the last few hands. Ace 10 would be a good reshop. The question is, should you play a little bit more passively because Mike Watson is so short and coming in the big blind? People have different approaches to this. Um, we're playing to win it, Nana. We're playing to win it. Get well, this we're just... calling, folding thing out of here. All right. Well, I think I he's going to win the hand anyway. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you, though, like you just, people play hands differently right like other pros would reshove ace 10 other pros would just call it just really depends on your approach is there a better play there probably is one but it's probably very close on what's actually better between the two well he's getting extra chips by uh, just calling because the BD is going to pretend that he's got an ace david jen definitely not a believer but he's like you know what if i just call here maybe he'll bet out one more time on the turn and we'll get even more out of it i like the That's call. right Try to represent like a king high, a 7x. Maybe your opponent tries to multi-barrel you. Uh, I don't really think Davidi Katai should bet again no. because... I what is he calling with? Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's not calling... He's not floating with some queen highs to just check fold the turn, you know? Like, um, But I don't know, maybe... He is going to bet wow. again. Um, I think I guess he's really targeting those like 7xs and just think they'll just fold out right. To be fair, the 7x might just fold out right on the turn because it's a lot of pressure. Guy is very short stack out there, White Mike Watson. Obviously, an ace is not going to fold. Uh, mm. King. <laughs> so sometimes, like, the flush comes in, you're like, I'm going to give up, I'm going to give up. And then you look again at your hand, you're like, I've got the king of clubs. But then again, he doesn't yeah, have he, got, yeah. he did pair as eight. If he didn't pair to eight, though, man, it'd be very interesting if he just changes his mind and just goes shipping crazy. Well, Davidi does lose a bunch of chips in this hand, and now David is all of a sudden second in chips as he wins a seven million chips there. Just calling preflop at the A stand definitely paid dividends for him here. As Brahman feels like it's time for him to make a move. King, queen on the button seems like a very standard play. I think Elias will let this one go. He also knows that Brahman doesn't do this with like absolute garbage hands, so no need to get in trouble. Just 
starting to feel a little tense here, Nana. As we're down to yeah. five, you know, like in the beginning we were dropping players real quick. I mean, we lost two players in the first three hands of this final table. So two guys waited from Sunday till Tuesday to play this final table. And they were out within the first three hands. But right now with the blinds getting as high as they are, I mean, nobody has an absolute monster stack, right? Of like 70, 80 bigs. Like, no. Wow, yeah, what and, a move um, by Elis. The thing is, um, no one has had a dominant, has been dominating. Elis has had the biggest stack, but he, did, he wasn't like raising every hand, putting pressure, getting on a fold. So like right now, it's, it is a bit of a stalemate, but they are going to wait for Mike Watson. Mike Watson going to get another double up coming up, right? Like he's just been hanging in there. He's dominating this uh, David Yan here. David Yan forced to call off, I believe. It's only five big blinds more. You don't yeah. love it, but you can just hope you just hit something. No, I think you just hope like, you know, even if you have an ace jack, I don't care. I just don't have an ace, uh, don't have a queen or a 10, right? Like give exactly. me two life cards. That's what you're hoping for here. I think you're right. I do think you have to call. Because, I mean, Michael Watson is also shipping sevens, eights, nines, exactly. fives, sixes here. So, yeah. You know, you're not, like, loving it, but sometimes no. the price is just too good. You get two to one. Does make the call, and Watson Receives looking for a double. Bad Niels. Needs a queen. Does not get a queen. Maybe a nine? Nope. Well, nine would be good. I'm going to chop it up. Ooh, was paint got a little scary <laughs> there, but Ace 10 will hold. So Watson does get the double up. And David Jen, after he just got a bunch of chips with Ace 10, he now loses a bunch of chips against Ace 10. Everyone else is like, God dang it, why couldn't we just get rid of the short stack? And yeah. I like to see Watson pick up some chips because it does, he does strike me as the one that's getting involved a bit more. Man, if you give Mike Watson a bunch more chips, he, I feel like he's going to put a bunch of pressure on his, on his opponents right now. Nice move by Elis. Man, Elis is still opening. Yeah. He's really solid and he really gets away with some, some, some naughty stuff mm -hmm. here and there, right? 10 8 offsuit. Yep. Davide Kitai folded a7 offsuit there in the small blind. Obviously, not an easy hand to play, but yeah, against uh, the way that Elis has been playing, I think a couple of other players in the past would have definitely taken a stance there. Davide gets out of trouble. Elis opens up another round, this time with ace king. He's like, all right, you guys are allowed to fight back if you want to, but. Nobody wants any action. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a let's fold our big blind day today. Like, wow, everyone's folding very, very reasonable hands that could be defended. Um, so right now, let's take a look at the pay jumps. It's a seventy thousand dollar pay jump from fifth to fourth, and uh -oh. you know it gets even bigger. Oh, two eights and two tens. Okay, we know Davian's going to ship the two tens. The question is, does Brahman call off his twenty one big blinds with? With two eights, I'm not too sure. The given the way he's been playing, I, I'm not. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Know. I think he folds. I think he folds actually. Yeah. Oh, wow, he doesn't actually. even think about it. Yeah, he's like, I I'm out of here. Brahman is like Jacks plus. I think he'll go for it, but the eight. But, he's just like, no. but then how did he three bet that queen three offsuit so early in the tournament? Like it was just so so insane, right? Like yeah. he's just like, no one's seen my whole cards yet. Let me just go for it. That one was a bit out of character, but everything else has been very in line. Like, <laughs> that is the one hand that doesn't really add up to the re the way that he has played the rest of this final table. But I'm not surprised to see him fold the eights there. Yeah. Uh, looks like there's going to be a bunch more folds coming up as Elis is going to raise. Um, so, Bra man, he's from the, he's uh, located in Ukraine. 1.2 mm -hmm. million in earnings. His big, I mean, I said he had a lot of earnings, but his biggest score was 75,000 in the Bounty King event that you said has yep. got a bunch of high rollers in there. Uh, he won his satellite in 1K event. He's played the Super Moons actually 11 times. Only has, this is his second cash. The other cash was just a min cash for 22,000. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he's back in there. Okay. He's up in the profit again now after this tournament. Um, love to see him open up but he's just trying to maximize as much as he can because he's like oh man i've been in the red so long in the super millions but now i'm finally here and let me just get as much as i can i mean once again obviously the hands go up based upon the amount of uh or the blinds go up based upon the amount of hands we play not over time you guys can see it in the top left side so after two hands the blinds will go up again and with all this pre-flop action and folding that we've got going on it feels like we're speeding this tournament up a little bit yeah, we're I like, like okay, let's, let's get these guys in. It's just folding way too much. Uh, but Elis, Jack-10, 
See, Mike Watson's the one opening up. You see him opening up the King Nine oh. with the shallow stack. And this is an interesting one because normally you no, the stacks wouldn't get in there, right? But given how short Mike Watson is, there's a chance there's a bet, check, raise, all in, call. Um, mm. We'll see what Elis decides to do. It is uh, 10 more big blinds to play. I wouldn't mind just a call here. Just one big blind. The king would be bad. The king would be real would bad. Be great for Elis. Yeah. All right, this makes the call. The deuce is obviously of no help. Let's see what Michael Watson does here. He's got to be feeling pretty good about his nine. He's like, exactly putting you on a queen. He's probably maybe a little more worried about, let's say, a king jack or a king ten or specifically jack ten. I like the bet again of Mike Watson. He's got nothing to lose. Just got to protect yourself against those straight draws, flush draws, ace highs. Elis. Tough spot though with Jack 10. It is going to let yeah. it go. I don't mind it. It's a double uh, flush board now as well, right? So it's mm. like, ah, you know, the outs are not that clean. On top of that, the board was already paired. You're not putting your opponent on a full house, but you never know. I think it makes sense to just get away from it there. As we've got Roman opening up King 10, and he's going to run into the Ace 10 of Elis. We'll talk about the action real quick. I want to mention we've got another free roll coming up. This one, this is the big one. Five times $55 tickets. Mega satellite to the Battle of Malta number 14 main event. Just go to the free roll section over at GG Poker. And the password is Rotterdam, guys. All one word. <laughs> I think now you here. see, they, they waited for the big one for you, right? To give you the, the, the nice free roll. What can I say? No, no, they just know that Roddy's been putting in the hours over the GG network, so he deserves the bigger free roll, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But uh, Elis actually reached up the Ace 10. You see how, like, you give Ace 10 offsuit to different players? They they play it differently because Davian just called, and, you know, Elis knows the tournament poker aspect of the game. Davian, I would say, primarily more of a cash game player, so it maybe takes a little bit. A lot of cash game players, when they take play tournaments, they kind of take a more post flop approach because they feel very strongly about their post flop play. But as tournament players, uh, they they tend to take more pre flop spots. They understand like chipping up without showdown is you know more important. Davidi just casually show up ace king every now and then, you know, just time for me to win some free chips somehow and uh, you know get up there. So he's gonna chip up. So one more time, guys. Free roll starting in nine minutes. Five fifty-five dollar tickets to win. Just go to the free roll section. Password Rotterdam. As Davidi gets it pretty much all in with the ace king here, he's gonna take it down free flop. And the blinds is six hundred k right now. I mean, Broman, we were just talking about like how he's building up a little stack. He's down to ten bigs again, you know. Yeah, and uh, he's just waiting for a hand to shove, pretty much at this point. But I think rather than waiting for a hand to shove, he's he's waiting for someone to bust before him. That's yeah. the real vibes I'm getting. King this 10. Everybody's yeah. short, man. I like this one, actually. The King 10 shove as well. He's going to get quite some respect, so he's only going to get called by, like, proper hands. And once again, there is so much in the middle every single round. Okay, this here's the question. Three's going in. I feel like it should. Yes. I think so. I think he's going to uh, do it. It's so, uh, then again, it is your tournament live, though. And I mean, the pay jumps get so big in the top five. I don't know, Nano. I I'll tell know. you this, though. Watson does strike me as the guy, like, you know what I'm calling. Remember, he called off the ace eight against uh, Elis, right? A queen jack for 18 big blinds. <laughs> the whap. Does that mean that, that's making Mike Watson feel like calling more a little bit, in my opinion, yeah, these yeah. emojis? The thing, as well, though, is that, like, even if you call, you know that it's like going to be a flip. Like, uh, you, exactly. unless you're going up against deuces or ace deuce suited but like you know 99 percent of the time here you're flipping and that is a little bit scary there's always a tiny chance that you're super dominated if he's got fives or sixes i don't mind the fold actually you know when you're this close to these massive pay jumps there are okay. better spots are these two gonna clash bra man's gonna shut up does yes. david yan go up two sevens or is he just like you know what we're all just folding today let's let's continue to trend no. We're going to get it all in. Brahman is going to go all in. and they No, nope, oh, the sevens is not... out. We're all folding today, Roddy. Dan. Okay. It's a new day today. The um, sevens, I kind of thought he was going to call. I didn't even think about it, actually, huh? He was insta-folded. Yeah. What about this one? What's what's going on in this end? Is this the Elis Parson and Reshop? This one's a little bit tricky because uh, under the gun open, you're in the next position to, to go with. So Reshop and Ace-10, while very strong normally, 
Wow. Uh, he opts to fold this one. I think Watson's oh. out too, baseline suited. I'm not sure. I feel like oh, he's wow. going to go for it. Okay, yep. Uh, Michael Watson does go for it. And that's just fantastic news for David Yen if he can find a know. call. But... I don't know if David Yen calls, man. I just, the way they've been playing, they 10 big blends ah. is not that much, but it's also a lot right now given the stack sizes. He folds. Wow, this is just a, this is a, this is an interesting final table. I'll tell you that. Ace ten, ace ten, ace nine, and ace nine takes it down free flop. That's uh, that's pretty fun. Uh, a seven suited. It's like you know what those suited aces have been pretty good to me. He's gonna open it up, and I don't think he will face any resistance here. And yeah, definitely a couple of surprising hands tonight, right? Yeah, it's a lot of surprising hands. A lot of it's actually been pre flop played today. I can't really recall many post-flop hands, actually, now I think about it. Everything that's been happening has been pre-flop. Um, I mean, Brawlman had the ace-jack hand where he rivet the ace. That one stands out. Yeah, but that was, that, was, that was a pretty small pot, too. So, yeah. like... Uh, uh, 4.5 4. or something, but yeah. <laughs> All right, Brahman is going to take this one down with ace-jack. Once again, these blinds will go up real quick because every single hand pretty much ends pre-flop. That's got to feel good as well. You shove ace-jack, next run you get pocket jacks. This time he's just opening. I think hoping that somebody else is going to come over the top. We're not folding jacks tonight pre-flop, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Davidi's out of queen 10 offsuit. So Davidi, you know, still playing that kind of cautious... Uh... Cautious. Uh, he's in second place, actually. But I, I wouldn't. I can't really say anyone's in second because they all have so they're all in second place compared to Elis right now. No, oh, absolutely. We've got one chip leader, and then we've got four guys tying up second place. <laughs> and if any of them double up, then they are pretty much the chip leader, especially if they double up through Elis. Elis makes a nine. He's gonna fire forward one big blind, and he will take this one down. It's gotta feel good as well because that's one of that's like one of these spots where you want to see Brahman come over the top. You're like, oh my goodness, he's he's got it, doesn't he? Well, I mean, Elis did make the right adjustment, in my opinion, that he's op he opened the nine seven to cut off. The mm -hmm. thing is, if he's he's obviously watching, all these guys are watching the stream. If they're watching the stream, you're gonna realize, man, they're folding the big blind so tight. If you're the chip lead, you're that means just open up. I've got a question for you, though. Like, obviously, you want to watch the stream because it gives you a lot of information about the way that your opponents are playing. But it can mm -hmm. also tilt, you know. For instance, if you're David Yen there and you look back at the hand where you fold ace 10 suited against ace 9 suited, that could have a negative impact on the way you're playing the remaining final table, no? Potentially, yes. Uh, well, let's. I want to get back to that in a second. But David Yen probably mm -hmm. should shove the two fours and get looked up by the ace king suited in the big blind. And he's going to flop a set. You know it, Nana. I was so sad when I watched you cast the Battle of Malta. I saw all these pocket fours. Not a single mention of the fact that the pocket fours always flop. Well, sometimes it's sad. This time he's in a lot of trouble. Jesus. Oh, needs a four or David Yen. The man who came in as ship leader is out. And he is out of the tournament as Ace King makes two pair there. That's it, man. Fours. Do not always flop a set. We're down to four. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say... Yes, I agree for your thing about, well, if you see some play, you made a mistake, and maybe you make a call later, and it ends up biting you later. Um, regardless, Watson, remember, this is a guy who went for, he got ninth place, ninth place, and eighth place. Now he's in top four, and he's reshipping on Grauman, A7 suited. I was going to say, you give Mike Watson these chips, he's going to use them. He's going to use them to try to win the tournament. Some of these guys have been playing overly cautious. Um I'm liking sick. it I'm, so far. I'm getting Go some Lucas Greenwood vibes over here. You remember <laughs> when Lucas shipped the high roller super millions? He was down to four big blinds, two big That's blinds, right. five big blinds, and a magical comeback. Tonight, it's all about Michael Watson. You were already making some jokes. He's like, well, he got a ninth place, a ninth place, and an eighth place. He's going to get a seventh place. Well, Michael Watson <laughs> said, hells no, Nana Noko. We're going for at least top four, but potentially a whole lot more. Can you, can you imagine Mike Watson too thinking like you gotta remember he at some point he was probably disgusted right when he had like three big blinds left he probably doesn't even remember it anymore because he's got 19 no. million in chips clear second place Davidi folds ace five suited on the button um he's ready, waiting out bra man I'll tell you that uh oh Elis be careful <laughs> we know that Elis likes to get a little bit out of line but okay 
good. He says, save, save. He, I, I did have the vibes that he was going to make it like 1.8 million or something and just, just give it away. Um, but uh, Watson now chipping up a little bit. Yeah, if you guys joined us later earlier in the tournament, Elis shipped Queen Jack suited from the small blind and got looked up by Michael Watson for what was like 90% of Michael Watson's stack with Ace-8. Queen Jack got the best of him, but he's been hanging around ever since. And all of a sudden, he's now sitting pretty at almost 20 million chips. I think it'd be beautiful if Michael Watson and Elis actually end up uh, as a heads-up match here with the history I mean, they've it... had throughout the table. True, true. But I mean, that's what it looks like it's going to be, right? They've got all the chips. And the, the other two guys are just waiting each other out. So they're going to blind down to like, you know, eight big blinds or so and get it in. Um, they're going to need a little bit of luck up there. And by the way, what an insane performance by Elis. Back-to-back -back final tables. Last week, Elis was the runner-up. Got so damn close to winning the tournament. And now again, a top four finish. We've seen it before, right? Somebody else got back Mr. to Mr. Gamble. Mr. Was... Gamble, yes. Yeah. Second place and he won it the following week. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Shall we combine some stacks now? Actually, I don't know. Davidi, if he doesn't shove... Well, he does seem like the shoving or fold type guy. So maybe he will get it then. I was going to say, if he min raids this, he might just fold to a shove. Uh, but Brahman, oh, clean double up here, right? Like, he can't fold ace jack. It would be insane. No. 11 bigs, I don't think you can fold it. Yeah, I mean, don't fold it. I know these guys have been folding a lot today, but just just don't do it, bro, man. You got you got nothing to lose. No, oh, he folds. No. The, the worst hand is winning every single time today because everyone is trying to ladder up. Oh, I mean, man. that's a hand that, like, if I'm watching the stream and I'm Brahman, I'll be so pissed. I don't know if he's still in, like, 15 minutes or 20 minutes from now on, but... That's absolutely a hand that would get the best of me. Oh, well, we got to move on. Let's see what Michael Watson does with his fives. He's just going to rip it all in and take down another hand. Blinds go My up again. Are 400, up. 800. It's a big blinds. This turn is going to be over soon. Yeah. I mean, Michael Watson is probably just going to take this one. I think that's one more reason why Brahman should have gone for it there. Not only do you have 11 big blinds, you're too... Two hands away from the blinds going up again. And then, you know, what does he have now? Eight? Not even. Well, here's the thing that's important is that when the blinds go up, your stack goes shorter. And the shorter your stack goes, the more the guy above you waits even harder, right? So Dimitri yep. will you play even tighter uh, because Brahman is so short. Like if, if Dimitri had like an ace five suited, he's not going to shove. He's just going to fold. Um, so he does shove ace jack. Brahman really, he's got to, he's got to look for a spot. He, he he's going to regret it if, like, say he yeah. doesn't pick up a hand soon. He eats the big blind. He eats the small blind. He's got four big blinds. He has to end up shoving queen nine suited, gets snapped off by like ace nine, and, and is out. You know, because when you got chips, you can get extra folds. When you don't have any chips, people just go, haha, I call you because you have no chips. Oh but no, maybe he's he gets yeah, a pay. No. He's going to ship no, this God. one. He has yeah. to, right? Six big clients, but... And Davidi's going to fold the two eights then. Yeah. If Brahman can somehow just play a little bit tighter today, a little bit tighter <laughs> one more time, he will get oh, a he page folds. up. Let's go, Brahman. That is one <laughs> hell of a fold. And Elis is probably he's like, all right, let's pick up the blinds. No, Elis, this is not your fault. Oh, I wonder if this is going to scare Davidi. Like, if it's just small blind against big blind, I don't think he can go anywhere. But if Michael Watson really comes over the top now, maybe Davidi lets go of the eights? Maybe. Maybe. Because you know what Davidi's thinking? He yep. does. Oh, my God. How did we not get an elimination in his hand? Elis. It wasn't Brahman. Elis saved him. Elis saved him. Oh, like, that's Brahman. But how did Brahman or Davidi both dodge elimination in his hand? It's insane, isn't it? Like, yeah. I don't know how it's possible. We've had a couple of very funny pre-flop scenarios. Tonight has not been about the post-flop poker. Okay. What? Back-to-back -back kings? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Brahman is done. 100% yeah. this hand. Unless he can spike a 7. A 7 from heaven. The Ukrainian tournament live is on the line. Nope. He's super dead. <laughs> he's a heart and he's out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, wow, quads as well. <laughs> <laughs>
death by quads. That is going to do it for Brom. And he walks away with $413,000. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, his tournament or his entire career earnings over at GG, $1.2 million. So he just increased that by 25%. That's got to feel pretty good. He's he's in the he's in the green for sure, bra man. A he folded his way to to fourth place. He got it done. You know he made one <laughs> sick move at the very beginning and didn't play a hand since. Uh, he did outlast David Yan, who came in as chip leader. So good stuff. We are down to three. Elis, Mike Watson. In my opinion, these two are playing phenomenal. Um, Watson obviously was handcuffed for a lot of the tournament after he lost a lot of his stack, but mm -hmm. these two guys are. It really does look like them playing heads up. But Davidi, he somehow. I don't know how he did it. He's in the top three. He is my pick to win it, but he's been playing very tight today. I think you agree with me, Rotterdam, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. he, he's still in it. The thing is, top three, you're not really going to – you're not going to fold anymore. It's a little bit different now because there's no one else to really wait out. Well, we've got a little hand going on over here. King High of Elis is good, so he's going to take this one down. He was probably wondering if I, hmm, I'm not going to get another second place this week, am I? It's like, you know, last week probably should have won it. Let's not go for back-to-back -back second places. Uh, this has been so wild. There have been so many moments where Davidi should have been out, but then he dodged the bullets. But also a couple of moments where he probably could have won a lot of chips. I don't know how you get back-to-back -back kings at a final table of a high roller super millions when you're four-handed, you know, like that. And he got paid both hands as well. Like, even... You know, the other hand, he, he picked up quite a few chips there as well because Elis opened up. Mm -hmm. Insane. Exactly. Um, I know Broadman's going to be looking back at the ace jack, so that's what's a. Because yeah. it's the thing, you, you know, you you think you make some tight fold, you're like, maybe I get reward later. And then when you lose, you're like, oh my God, I, I got punished so hard, didn't I? Yeah. I? Like, if that would have been the first hand of that level, I still don't think I love the fold, but I could get behind it. But the blinds were literally going up either the next hand or the following two hands. And then you drop from like 11 big blinds to seven. And then they're coming around, obviously, as well, because you're four-handed. Like, it just doesn't get much better than ace-jack there. You just got to go for it, I feel. Watson's got 10-8. I'd love to see him just ship it in. Davidi's only got 10 big blinds plus EV shove. He is going to chip up. Wow, Watson actually has a sizable lead, 30 30 million to 20 million. I mean, he's playing very well. He's being aggressive ever since he got some chips and you know, getting back to back kings helps as well. I still can't believe that guy had three big blinds at some point. <laughs> I know. It's, it's Lucas Greenwood. I mean, I thought that was the most magical fairy tale story we were going to have, but we've got another one, guys. Davide Kitai is going to basically get it all in with the sevens. He will pick up one round. You know, the funny thing is, is that Elis was the one that did the damage to Mike Watson, and now Mike Watson somehow has him out-chipped at this point. Yeah. Okay, this could be it, right? Fireworks, I think it is going to be. Six has got to call it off, and Davidi, can he hold? Needs to dodge the jacks or the eights. Now he needs to probably dodge an ace as well. An ace, jack, or an eight is what we need to end up with a heads-up scenario. Well, the sixes hold. That was pretty scary <laughs> with the parrot board and everything. But Davidi Kita is now back to 16 million chips. Nanoko, your pick refuses <laughs> to die tonight. He's ready to play. Okay, right. He's got to be ready to play now. He's They got all the same stack. They were three-handed. 100k pay jumps. Um, let's go, Davidi Kita. He's going for the trap of the ace jack. Mm -hmm. Doesn't take get baited from his opponent. Uh, but... They both flop pretty clean here. Yeah, Elis probably looks at his flops like, oh, mid pair. Got a couple back doors. Another diamond may slow down the action, but the, the Davidi Kitai does have the jack of diamonds as well. Yeah, I don't think Davidi Kitai is uh, worried. I should just keep betting. Mm -hmm. He is going to bet again. I think he'll take it down here. Elis may be like, is it really necessary to play a seven, eight million pot here? When I could be drawing dead already. And yeah. Then, yeah. It's best to get out of the way. Pocket eights for Michael Watson. See what he decides to do with it. 
It's been so I, much pre-flop poker here. I'm almost like, I'm getting a little anxious when I see some flop bets and turn bets. I'm like, how do we do this? No, 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 could it's been always. <laughs> no, I, honestly, there hasn't been a big post-flop spot at all. It's literally been like a bet and a call and a bet and fold. That's pretty much it. Two eights, I would love to see a reshove. Lots of uh, pre-flop value in this hand. And I was watching playing he's playing the hands a way they should be played you know what i mean he's yeah. not like a oh, call I'll see a flop maybe i and it's check fold find a way to lose somehow but uh, ace eight suited will be interesting because they are playing 22 big blinds i think calling and seems reasonable some people like to reshove this some people like to three bet fold yeah. i like the reshove it's nice um he's playing great yep yeah. I feel like Michael Watson is playing very well. Like, he just lost a pretty big pot, but he already has all of his chips back pretty much. You see that he wakes up here with King Jack. Maybe Queen Jack is going to fight back. I would definitely like to see Elis at least call here. Doesn't flop anything. These are the worst flops ever for, like, Jack-10 and Queen Jack. You're like, come on. <laughs> Nothing? No hope? Okay, well, Queen Jack, hmm. He's going to let it go. Some people yeah. like, okay, maybe it's good, but it's tough to play out of position with, when there's an overcard out there like that. Two jacks and ace four. If Elis limps this jacks, limps. man. He, yep. Oh, nice. Oh, I love it. I love the limp. Mike Watson's going to raise this. I just yeah. The question is how much? Maybe all of it. He might just ship it. Oh, this is it, Nananoko. Jacks against ace four. Can Elis survive? Can he avoid the aces? So far, the answer is yes. With a 10, we can wrap this one up. There is no 10 yet. There are still some outs. Do we see pips? Do we see paint? Ooh, that got scary because, you know, that could have been one of the scary cards, but the Jacks will get the double up. And it, Elis... was, it was so scary because Elis put the running cold before the river card flipped up too. I'm yeah. like, oh man, don't do it to yourself. Man. What a moment to get Jax. Well done there. I love the limp. The limp really got it done there. Because if he just raises, that is a completely different hand. Well done. Exactly. And while well, Mike Watson was like, oh, I'm going to ship this tournament into, oh, wow, maybe I might get third. The VD now picks up Ace Jack. He's going to reach up. And now all of a sudden, Mike Watson on the shortest stack. Man, the blinds are so big, man. Things are yeah. just changing quickly. Yep. Elis is going to get out of the way with his Jack Deuce offsuit, and I think Michael will let this one go as well. It's obviously, you're pretty much always behind there. You know, Elis is like, hey, sitting pretty, almost 30 million for the first time tonight. And the Fidi Kita is like, well, laddering has gone well. I think we can ladder one more. I don't know who's going to bust, <laughs> but it's not me. Like, <laughs> the Fidi is as just cruising for you. a second place tonight. That's what I feel. Yeah, get to the second place and just play heads up, and maybe you ship it. That's all right, though. Jack nine, I mean, three handed. It's kind of funny as well. All three players that survived were on the left side of the table, all next to each other. <laughs> Don't see that super often. Yeah, they've, they've all been all in at risk too. It's, there hasn't been any dominance uh, throughout this final table. And Ace King, he's going to go for the min race. So that's going to get Elis to reshove. And we're going to have another all in confrontation here 21 million in the middle. Yep, that's a big pot. Can the sevens hold or not? Oh, what a Ooh. scary flop. Ace, king, or a jack is needed. We've been here before, and then we saw a queen on the river, right? Ace, king, or a jack? Oh, is that an ace? Wow. That's the second time. That's the second time we've seen that. I mean, earlier it was a very small pot because Michael Watson only had like three big blinds back then. This time <laughs> it's a massive one. So now he's back to 21 million. And all of a sudden, Elis... I mean, he's not the shortest stack, but it's, it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, no one can't, they can't hold on to the lead. Uh, Elis just for, he needed to do the emoji at the right time. He, he did it after he lost the hand, you know? He was out of character, so he let his opponent spike that ace on the river card. Davidi, top two pair. Yep. I don't think Michael's going to get in too much trouble. I actually would like to see a super small bet or even a check here. It's pretty dry board, right? I mean, like, yeah, sure, 8-6 is small scary. Or, yeah, I, smaller even. I want to see smaller. One big blind, just bet the one. <laughs> Set up the trap. You know, how do they call that game? Is it called hot potato where they're throwing away, uh, you know, something? Yeah, I feel like hot that's, potato. That's what they're playing with the Chibli tonight. It's like, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I will take it if I was at this final table. You give me the chip lead. Uh, I'll just try and hold on to it. Elis, two deuces. Trying to think, okay, do I raise? Do I open ship it? Uh, are you going to limp? Um, interesting play. That's I think funny. it's reasonable, though. Hmm. But once someone starts to limp, it's sometimes a little contagious. Everyone starts to limp a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that play, you know? Wow. What a flub, Nanonoko. What a flub. Michael Watson makes mid pair. David Kitai makes top pair. And Elis flops a set. Bottom what? set, too. The disguise set. No one ever thinks he's got the set of deuces no. here. Davidi's going to call as well. Davidi here is like, what? Like, we're only playing pre-flop. Now we are playing post-flop, and two guys are betting while I've got uh, top pair. I actually don't like that turn card very much. Yeah, yeah that's going to uh, just get the other two guys to just fold out right, I believe. You know? Man. Elis, the thing is, on the turn, he was looking for, he was looking for a jack, a six, a king, a queen, something to improve his opponents. You know, it's like the ace, the flush gets in, just the worst card yeah. possible. Let's see what Elis decides to do. I mean, you don't want to check it. Okay, that is an amazing river card for Elis, though. The Vidi Kitai has got to believe that his king is good here, right? Because obviously you're playing the queen kicker as well. So you're playing ace, ace, king, king, queen. The Vidi Kitai has got to believe that he's good here. Yeah. Um, he probably can't get called by worse, but he might still pay off a bet. Yeah. Um, Elis, what should he do here? Uh, I think he should target the king. Yep. So you got to bet small. It seems Three, so two. unlikely someone's got an ace because ace, king, ace, queen. Yeah, I like the bet size. It's perfect because if he bets anything bigger, those other hands just snap fold because it's just so hard for someone to have an ace hand. They would just raise pre-flop, you know, the ace jack. So he gets the VD to call. Very nice bet from Elis. I know, like, sometimes you're thinking, you got a full house, you go for bigger bets, but you need to be thinking about how your opponents are playing and mm -hmm. uh, what, what they have, and that's just perfect sizing. I think a little bit bigger wouldn't have hurt, though. This was 1.5 okay. big blind. An extra 100k, 100... but if he bet half the pot, he wouldn't have got looked up. Okay. I mean, uh, two big blinds then, you know. There's 5 million in the middle. It's a pretty serious pot. As he ships the fives. At least he retakes the chip lead, so we'll keep playing hot potato with the chip lead at this final table. Man, this feels so wild, because any of them... three. All three of them can win it, even though it didn't feel like David Kitai, uh, you know, is on course to win it. He's one big hand away from actually still winning this tournament. Yeah, if you get Davidi Katai to chip lead, I'm sure he'll be a different player. He might just ship this Jack-10. Ace do still, 14 bigs. I don't know. If, I think it's a fold against the way yeah. Davidi's been playing so far. Like You know you might be good here, but what's the best case scenario? Like, you know, 55, 45. Like, I don't mind the fold at all. Ooh, aces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like, maybe I should limp it. You know, I saw Elis limp his pocket deuces. Right, he's going to raise like it up the race. Hoping that somebody comes over the top with a good old king jack or a queen jack, something along those lines. Unfortunately for Davidi, the other two players okay. had nothing. This could this be a it. big one. Yeah. For who? This for who, Nananoko? <laughs> oh, yeah, for who? That's exactly right, Rowdy. Like, but this has to be it. Like, Elis cannot fold for 15 big blinds. Ace Jack suit is just too good. So here we go again. Last time the tables were turned, right? It was Ace King against the Sevens. This time it's Ace Jack against the Sevens. Very similar flop. Oh, oh, there's the Ace. The end. Well, a club, we chop it. With a club, we chop it. Okay, it's, it's not, not a, a club. It's a 10. Uh, and that means that we are down to two. Michael Watson will be eliminated. He walks away with almost $500,000 and did a lot better than the previous three times yeah. he made it to the final table. But he was pretty close to winning it, Nananoko. He was pretty close. It's got to sting a little. It's You know what? It's okay. because you know, It's a good score. Um, mm -hmm. That score is bigger than some of our wins for our previous Super Million champion, yep. you know? So, like, I'm, just, I'm happy to see it because... He, He's such a good player. He doesn't deserve the ninth, ninth, eighth place record that he has. He deserves some of these top spots. He's done well. But in the end, it is Elis Parsonen who gar who got top. He got second place last week, right? Yep. He could get he's guaranteed the same place or bigger, but the prize pool is so much bigger. So he's already scored so much. But he's up against the guy I picked, the Vidi Katai, who's outfolded everyone. And now he's no, 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 he can't fold anymore. He's got to win it. No, 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 we've been here before and we have a name for this, guys. We call this pulling a Mr. Gamble. 
You got second place at your first final table last week, and then your second final table the following week, back to back, you win the entire thing. Mr. Gambo has done it, and I have the feeling that Elis is going to do it here as well. But like a three and a half to one chip late. But it's my pick, so I don't know. I've got to root for Davidi Gitai. We'll see, but I do agree. Elis has got he's got the skill. He's got the chips. He's been on a heater. Um, and this week, he's got the time bank. No, no, no. God, that helps as well. well. Kind of. <laughs> he still has two minutes. Davidi's got queen nine suited. He did limp call, uh, but he has been outflopped here. Oh. Elis is going to just outchip even more. I actually think I would have liked to see him just shove it in with queen nine suited. Hands up. It's a pretty good hand. Like Jack I five think if offices. you were going to do the limp jam for 13 bigs, you might just open ship it. Who knows? He's got 10 uh -oh. He's got five minutes to think about it. We're going into heads up as we take a break. Yep, guys. We are uh, we are entering our second break of the evening. As you guys know, the breaks became a little bit shorter over at GG, so it will only take a couple of minutes. We were down to six in the previous break. We are now down to two. We hope all of you guys had fun watching the broadcast so far. This can obviously still go on for a while, but we'd call... We'd what could also happen is that uh, we are back in four minutes and then it takes two, three hands and it is all over. I do want to mention, as I completely forgot to do that this week, we always have a Twitter contest as well. You guys can guess the winning hand. All you have to do is follow GG Poker Official over at Twitter. And then each and every single week, there will be a post made where you guys can reply with your username and then guess the winning hand of the High Rollers Super Millions. Nano and I haven't played the game yet. Maybe we'll predict it soon. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned. We'll take a couple minutes and then we'll see you guys soon for the conclusion of the 23rd edition of the High Roller Super Millions, which is the second biggest one we've had so far. We'll be right back.
All right, guys, 45 seconds, then we'll continue the heads up battle between Elis and Davidi Kitai. Before we get into that, I just want to mention that obviously every Saturday we have the Beat the Pros event. It's a $210 bounty event where all the streamers, influencers, and some of the GG heroes as well are participating. If you knock any of them out, you get a free entry into a $5,000 free roll. And apparently everybody sits out in that free roll. So knock one of us out, go for it. The tournament keeps growing bigger and bigger each and every single week. It's really fun to see. Last weekend we had 1,400 entries. That is really cool to see. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. And if you've got some time upcoming Saturday, make sure to check it out. Always starts at 6 p.m. Central European Summer Time. So noon on the East Coast and 9 a.m. on the West Coast. All right, now, now here we go. Heads up. It's not a very fair fight at this point, but who knows? <laughs> hey, oh. this could be it, right? Let's yep. call Davidi. Let's go. Davidi Kitai needs to avoid diamonds and nines. Oh, or a jack or a six. <laughs> no jack, no six, and we get a double up. Can Davidi Kitai hold? Yes, he can. So he chips up to 21 million. And now the fight is a little more fair. Let's this get it on. Fair fight. This is a fair fight indeed. Um, let's go. Davidi Kitai, ace eight. I can't believe he's in heads up right now. <laughs> right. This is so insane. <laughs> 20 big blinds. And he's flopped up pair. Wow, he's, he's going to be real close and real close with this pot. Yep. I do think this is just going to go bad fault, right? There's no need for Elis to stick around mm -hmm. here. Agree. Uh, because you know why? No back wow. doors. You need that back door spade. That's such a big bet, by the way. He's spending 3 million there into a 4 million pot. Yeah, I got a little greedy, but he wouldn't have got action anyways. Mm -hmm. Um all right, so we're going to introduce that limping game in this uh, 23 big blind stack effective. Elis is like, let's not do it. No back-to-back -back second places, please. Even though it's an amazing score, regardless. Like, if you get your heads up two weeks in a row, you just want to ship the tournament. Yeah, Dos is eight here on the turn, so he's going to feel pretty good about that. I mean, they're playing for a lot right now, you know? <laughs> like, the pay jump is big in this heads up match. Yeah, it's over $100,000 or almost. That's crazy. I would like to see Elis put a, a bed out there. Um, one big blind. Been one big blind. Been, pretty much, yeah. It's been checked throughout. Um, try to get looked up by something. Yeah, maybe hoping his opponent had a seven. That'd be amazing. Does not work out. So we're on to the next one. Ace do suited against King 4 offsuit. I don't think you want to play King 4, right? In the heads up. Yes, you definitely want to play King Four uh, with these uh, these kind of stack sizes as well. That's how poker is so fun. It's like not only the Daniel Dog Pog match that I've been watching, but after I find myself in some heads up spots as well, it's like uh, it's like I feel like I never have anything, but oh. they cannot always have it either. This is a big move, and I think that Davidi will just get it all in. Um, depends if he. Th yeah, he is going to ship it. It just depends if you think he's got three bet uh, wow. folding range. He does, and that is a massive pot. What? Actually, even in chips. Yes. Dead even. Nanonoko, three minutes ago, it was like 47 million to 10 million. <laughs> now it's 28 against 28. That's insane. Davidi Katai. Okay, let me get another notch on my board of uh, how many winners I pick, because you can do it today. We have a chance. You outfolded everyone. You just got to beat this one guy. Heads up. No three, please. No three. Like, Think if the it's three. A three it's they're rivered at 10 and it's all over. Oh, okay. That's, that's not a good card. Um, okay. Well, he could still hit the three, but I think Elis is obviously betting here again, right? Yes, he just... should be betting again. Uh, he can represent a flush draw. So he can get looked up by eight another street. Of course, there's a lot of worse aces. I think if Elis had a weak ace, he can consider checking, do a little bit mm -hmm. of trapping. But this hand's a little too strong to not look for the three streets of value. So Elis retakes the lead as we see a fold here. <laughs> Still enjoys showing the occasional card. He's going to give us the running hot as well, even though he just dropped 15 million chips in five minutes. But... I was going to say Elis needs to keep up his emoji game because if he doesn't, if he's not consistent, you know, bad things happen. But I'm glad to see him just running hot at just now. Jack eight just bumping up the limp. So Davidi recognizes that Elis is starting to introduce a limping game, trying to keep the pots 
small see as many flops as possible against that you do need to raise your big blind a little bit with some garbage hands to kind of just punish your opponent in nine hands the blinds will go up again but they're already very big i mean davidi is only playing at this point 24 ish big blinds it's gonna make the call here with the nine seven line of play really flops anything but elias could maybe throw out a little c bet and take it down should be Steven and King Deuce Deuce. I imagine it's just very dry, very hard for your opponent to continue unless you think they're just overfloating you. Um, he does think that Davidi will overfloat him a bit, so he's going to go for the delayed bet. Uh, but I think he can really credibly represent an ace really easily if he wanted to. The only bad thing about like betting these kinds of boards is that if you get a race, you're going to have to fold immediately. Wow, okay, so Elis going for the super delayed bet. I imagine I imagine you're just free rolling the pot because you're chopping it up anyways. Uh, I think you should just bet, give your opponent a chance to, to lose the pot, and uh, there's the bet. Can Davidi call for a chop? The board is played out there. Yeah. I think it think I think I'd call, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think I would, I would call. call. Nice. Yep. Makes sense. Well played by Davidi, but uh, that is just such a dry board. It's like, well, if you have it, you have it, mate. But let's take a look. I agree. I mean, like, look. If he, he, and you got to remember, sure, he can have an ace or king. But you got to remember, it's an ace or king that didn't bet the flop or the turn. So that decreases yeah. the, the likeliness so much more that you can call for the chop. All right. 5-3 against 5-10. That is a monster flop for Elis. Does not only make a pair of 10s, but also picks up the flush draw. Unfortunately for him, he's not going to get any action here. Ten seven, Daniel's favorite hand, or at least it used to be, a long, <laughs> long time ago. Yeah, Daniel, he wants just pocket aces now against <laughs> Douglas, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Davidi's got the flush draw. It's good. Imagine he's going to bet. He's been pretty consistent with betting flops, so it doesn't make sense for him to just start checking all of a sudden. There's no need for Elis to really make a move here, but you do, you do think about it, right? It's like, yeah, I don't believe you really have a whole lot. Maybe I can just take this one away from you, but he's like, nah, there will be better spots. going to limp here with the 8-4 offsuit. 10-6 is just going to check in the big blind, and Elis makes a pair of fours. Yep. Um, Davidi does have a straight draw, so he should be continuing. Uh, does have an overcard to the board. Six is sometimes good. Don't really think he should be folding this this hand. So we'll see. He might think, check. He's raise, thinking about the race. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's too good, man. And heads up, like most of the time, you just have absolutely nothing. So you're like, oh, over, overcard, gut shot. And he takes it nice. down. Well done by Davidi. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're getting your opponent to fold a pair of fours in, in that spot in limp pot, like, it's, it's printed money with the check raise. Very well done. It's a, it's a good match right now. And see, we finally got some, some post-flop spots, right? Like, it really yeah. was just all pre-flop until heads up. So, Which is funny, because normally it's the other way around. We get a lot of post-flop action until we get heads up, and then people are just shoving <laughs> into each other. Today, we saved the post-flop play until we were heads up. But here we are. Ooh, action flop, perhaps? Yeah, I would say it's a bit of an action flop. Um, Elis. Well, I would like to see Elis go for probably a flop and turn bet, at least. Um, because Davidi is going to often have, you know, 9-4 offsuit, things like this. But Elis does turn a pair, but he shouldn't think the pair is good. I guess the question is, does he think a better hand will fold? Kind of funny because Davidi has a whole bunch of things going for himself now as well. With a six, he would make a straight. And obviously with a jack, he makes a straight as well. Yeah. So I like that Elis is still betting. He will get a lot of full, better hands to fold, like you know, the ten fives, the nine three. Like there's so many of these garbage hands. <gasps> it is a straight for Davidi Kitai, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Nice straight too. Yep, pretty hidden. I don't think that Elis is really expecting Davidi to have an 8 here. Man, Elis might just bet again. The thing is, Davidi still has a lot of hands that will fold. Jack-10, 
Jack nine, these hands would call a turn bet, right? And they'd have to fold to river bet at the fourth straight. Elis knows his hand is no good. And he is now out chipped by Davidi Kitai. Davidi, the chip leader going into this heads up match now. Oh my God. I Why? can't believe he's might ship it. <laughs> no, I cannot believe that either. <laughs> Especially if you've watched the entire broadcast. He just makes the call here, yeah? playing it very safe, conservative. Bit surprised yeah. that he just calls yeah. there. What do you make I of personally that? would have raised, but um, you know, Davidi gonna Davidi, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't really see why you would just call against that small bet sizing. Uh, but it's it's it is what it is. Nothing was going to change anyways. Uh, but blinds are up. Yep, one point two million right now. Yeah, actually, there was a small graphical error. It said that we were already at this level before, but obviously, you guys could see that it was only half a million, million before. Now we are at 600k, 1.2 million. Davidi takes this one down as well. It's only been 10 minutes since the last break. And Davidi Kitai went from 10 million chips to 37 million. And Elis is like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> Back to back second places. I don't think anybody has done that yet. So it would be a record, but I think he would have preferred to pull a Mr. Gamble here. All right. So Elis is going to limp here. Let's see Davidi. I mean, I'm trying to think. I think Davidi has a really good track rec record in heads up, actually. I think he ships a lot of tournaments. Um, mm. Don't think he has a lot of second places than that. From memory, from like all his all the live performances, here, but maybe I'm wrong. But I'm I'm just trying to send him all the good vibes because I did pick him to win. Let's go, Davidi Katai. Elis would have been your second pick if, if he had more chips, right? Going into if he had yeah. more chips going into this bounty, you would have picked them. Yes, uh, if he had a top four stack or maybe even top five, I think I would have picked him because obviously last week he made a very good impression on us. But I was like, yeah, I can't pick the guy who comes in to, in to find a table in eighth place. As he oh, is nice. forced to fold this one as well. Davidi gets it all in with the King 3 suited. I mean, it's far from over. If Davidi can make a comeback from 10 million, Elis can absolutely make a comeback from 70 million. But I don't know if I can do another show with you if you just pick another winner. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> uh, well, Davidi's got the 7 9 here. Um, he's got a bunch of backdoor weak draws. So he is going to fire, but. Uh... Can't imagine Elis folding bottom pair here. It's just it's a limp pot. You can't really fold a pair. That's a good card though for Davidi Katai. Um, I think he should bet again. He is gonna be up against those nine fours, the six five offsuits, just a lot of hands that will fold. And plus, even if your opponent has a king, you can still hit a lot of outs to just still win the pot. So I like the bet. Ah, there are so many bad cards on the river here for Elis. Like, can't even <laughs> You got the four of hearts. You're thinking, man, the four of hearts is it's a draw, but it's not a good draw. You think Elis is thinking about that last heads up match too? It's like, man, remember when I hero called last time? I just lost the tournament. Um, just these things are they come into play a little bit. Has 48 seconds left on a shot clock. There's something to keep in mind as well. Uh -oh. oh, it's the end of Elis Parson and Ace against Ace. Well, Ace Deuce is where some of the magic started earlier tonight, right? For Lina, Ace Deuce against Ace King. Can Ace Deuce get the job done here again? Obviously, there are some chop. Nope. I need to do or a four, or it is all over. It oh, is again. over, it. isn't it? It's over. Oh Davidi Katai wins it. The Nano Noko pick has won the tournament. It wasn't the cleanest victory. He got it done. <laughs> 50. 7 million chips, 726, that's a huge score about Elis Parson in second place again, Roddy. Yeah, back to back second places for Elis from Finland, that is very impressive, especially because this week we had a very big field, 581 entries because it's the high roller week over at GG, so everybody was <laughs> trying to get lucky in the high roller super millions, but Nananoko has done it again. Davide Kitai gets the job done. Uh, really quite a remarkable run. I mean, let's not forget, 13 minutes ago, Nanonoko, he was outshipped three and a half, almost four to one going into this heads up match, but he turned things around real quick. Yeah, that, this was obviously a big super million today, 720K up top. Um, let's we had give it to Elis. He played great to his final table. I really like the way he played today. Um, Another second place. It's a good second place to get, though, because this one's worth more than the second place he got mm -hmm. last week. 
Um, but let's recap through this final table. It was a lot of preflop action. The first three hands was hilarious because we got Joker <laughs> face sitting out and two guys just busting, right? Lena actually sucked out, right, with the ace deuce against the, yep. the ace king that very first hand. Uh, Lena had 14 million chips. That was the big hand. You know what I'm talking about. Lena jams pocket sixes, sixes for 35 big blinds. Elis thinks about it. Calls with two nines with multiple players act behind them with 25 big blinds. A play a lot of guys with people would fold. But Elis, you know, he knows his spots. He knew he had a range equity advantage there. And was just like, you know what? I might bust first, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go for the, put myself in a position to get one of those top spots. And he did get that top spot. He got top two. It might have even shipped the tournament today. Mm -hmm. That was the big hand. And what was the other key part about that hand was Davidi Katai in the big blind had 20 big blinds and folded ace king. He played ICM cautious throughout this final table. He was making mm -hmm. lots of folds in the big blind. He didn't put himself in the spot to get tournament risk. That's the thing. If there's a spot to be tight, it is at final tables. And it's at final tables with big prize pools. This was especially big, right? Because uh, more people entered. He folded that ace king. And he actually would have busted that tournament. Um, and a lot of things, you said it, a lot of different things could have happened. Nicholas uh, doesn't open jam, or maybe Nicholas jams, Elis folds. He, Davidi would never fold Ace King in that spot, right? It was just mm -hmm. two way. It's just so many crazy things happen. Eventually, you know, more people busted out. It was Elis and Davidi Katai. And Davidi Katai just, he won a lot of all ins in, in that heads up match. And he's our champion. And I picked him to win, Rowdy. Yes, you did, Nano, and I know I'll never hear the end of it, but there was one more key hand that also could have been the end, I think, of Davide Kitai, and that is when Michael Watson had kings in the small blind, he had pocket eights in the big blind, but then Elis is like, I'm the chip leader, I'm opening up jack seven offsuit from the button, and because of that, Michael Watson comes over the top with his kings, and Davide is like, well... I guess I'll let the eights go then at this point. Because if it's just small blind against big blind there and there now, I don't think the eights are going to go anywhere either. There's one more key uh, point you missed out on that hand. It was bra man, six big blinds under the gun. Ace Jack. Four, <laughs> folded, no, he folded Jake. He actually folded Jack 10 that hand oh, where yes, Davidi exactly. Katai had two eights, which Jack 10 is a slam dunk jam, I think, in that spot. So crazy. And bra man also folded the ace Jack. Davidi Katai got bailed out in some hands, right? Davidi Katai, yeah. he shoved ace 10. And Broadman folded Ace Jack. Like, man, this this tournament could have been very different if some players made different decisions. But a lot of mm -hmm. guys actually made a lot of tight folds today. And some were rewarded, some were punished. It is the game of poker. But today, Davidi Katai does ship it and he wins a lot of money $720,000. Previously, he made a final table. He got eighth place. He didn't have any chips to work with. Today, he was in second place. and. You know he used them he used those chips way different than a lot of other guys would but this guy obviously studies icm poker very heavily you know what mm -hmm. all those folds he made maybe they were actually correct it was a very different game he takes a different approach to the game and that's what's the beauty of this game is that there's many different styles that works and they're all winners right michael damo relentless aggressive guy that just jam 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 stuff like this you know volkman then you got Davidi Katai playing different. And then you got the, you know, the luck boxes out there. And there's just so many different stuff. It's, <laughs> it's a beautiful game, Roddy. It really is a beautiful game. And even though this final table was, I think, very different than some of the other final tables we had, I think it was a lot of fun. And it was truly unpredictable. I mean, we said hot potato at one point when we were down to three. They were just tossing the chip lead around. And even this heads up match. If you would have told me that 18 minutes after the break, Davidi Kitai would be our champ, I'd be like, ah! I'll place a bet on my money list there. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. It was a lot of fun, and that is going to do it for us tonight. Obviously, Nanonoko, you've been commentating the Battle of Malta as well. You've been cheating on me with that other Kevin, and I heard <laughs> you guys are having a few more shells. So when is that happening? I believe it's Saturday. Is that... Is that um, it was the same day, it was the one week from, I think it was Saturday. Um, I might, the, the reason I say I think it's Saturday is because my time is a little funny because I'm in Australia, mm -hmm. so... Maybe you know a little bit more. Do you know, Roddy? Uh, what's it Saturday? I don't know it? more, but what I do know is that if people just subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notifications, then they will get an alert when you and Kevin Martin will go live to uh, provide coverage of another final table. And I highly recommend it because I actually watched the entire previous final table you guys did, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Had a very slow start to it. 
I, in particular, I forgot the nickname, but the Israeli dude was on the right side. He just played nothing. And then he's like aces, <laughs> aces, ace king, and he got a top three finish. I was like, my man, I like that. I, I can get behind that approach. Uh, but yeah, that's a lot of fun. And then, of course, guys, we still have coverage of the heads up battle between Danny on the ground and Doc Pork happening over at this YouTube channel as well. And then, on top of that, you guys can uh, comment on videos and reply with your username on GG Poker. You can get entry into free rolls, you can get tournament tickets. So, a million reasons to subscribe and i think that pretty much does it for us nana yeah and um it's funny because when you were talking about how you like that israeli guy inside playing aces only i was like your dad would love this stream today. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely he's like see son why don't you just play more like him i was like well dad we don't always get aces and ace king every now and then you gotta make a move uh, well, guys, that is going to do it for us. I had a ton of fun again tonight, and hopefully you guys at home as well. If anybody got lucky with the free rolls or perhaps the Twitter contest, what was the winning hand here? Was it uh, Ace-8? Ace eight? Eight. Ace-8 ace eight 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 offsuit. Eight off I don't know which yeah, suits, but it was offsuit. But I feel like yeah, Ace-8 okay. won again recently, like within the mm -hmm. past few weeks. Yes, that was the Ace of Clubs and the Eight of Diamonds. I think we had a slightly different suit this time, but... Oh, you're spot on. That's the second time. And that's a popular hand, I think, as well, right? In the heads-up battle, people love their aces. So hopefully somebody got lucky with the Twitter contest. If not, just follow GG Poker Official over at Twitter, and then maybe you guys can get lucky next week. That is going to do it. I hope you guys have a beautiful morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever you may be. And make sure to tune in next week for another edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Bye-bye.